Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome to another uh, Collector Fusion with Collector Express, Geek Fusion TV, or Geek Fusion TV, Collector Express, Quinn Comics, JBTM, or, or JTBM and Quinn Comics. Or we can, we can do this, <laughs> yes. move things around. Yes. <laughs> Matt, you're messing with my eyes, man. Don't do that. Just <laughs> exactly what he said. I, I just went cross eyed. Good Lord. Seems like, it looks like we're on the episode of a Brady Bunch. Tell me about it. How we all became the collector bunch. <laughs> there, there, there's Matt. There's JB or Jace. And there's uh, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Friday, everyone. And welcome to the show. And well, Quinn, it's not, every day is a work day for you, so. Yeah, I, mean, I only take Christmas and Thanksgiving off, you know, I mean. Yeah. Working on rearranging my Ultraverse shelf. I just cleaned it off. I moved it from, moved it, I switched around the Hulk villain, fighting villains to my Ultraverse. So I'm going to take a chance to do a little dusting and do that. There you go. Oh, Aku's already on the roll, Matt. He's saying tonight's the night you transform a transformer. I got something to transform, but I'm not going to. Hey, hey, keep it clean. <laughs> keep it clean. Make your fans happy. Come on. Now. Nope. I don't even. I mean, I don't think this is a complicated transform transformer, but uh, I'm not going to because I, I don't care about the uh, the alt mode like at all. Mm -hmm. So, got to uh, pick this dude up. Oh, oh nice. nice! So, oh, that's sweet. Which I only got because I think he looks cool in robot. He's one of the few bay formers that I actually think looks cool. So, yeah, but I I, I know he turns into some kind of crappy tank looking thing, and I don't even care about that. I just care about the I just care about the robot mode. Exactly. All my transformers, I leave them in robot mode because that's what they were in in the cartoon most of the most yeah. of the time. Well, I mean, like, look, there's some, and I know they they're, they still make some really nice transformers that have really really great looking, very very accurate, realistic looking uh, alt modes that look you know really good as, as as like a specific kind of car or jet or whatever, right? And those are cool, and certainly back when I was a kid, when it they, because remember when we were growing up, they put. Let's be honest, we all know this. They put more effort into the alt mode than the robot mode. That's how Transformers oh. used to be. The the robot mode, we're kind of like, you know, oh look, you can turn the car doors kind of into arms or something. You know what I mean? And they look really good. Like there's a lot of those older figures that you know. That's like, one of the things that the they did well with the Transformers cartoon versus the GoBots cartoon. Oh, they were very they knew not to make them look like the toys in, yeah. in the cartoon gobots did not make when they did that cartoon they did not do that correction they made the figures the, the characters in the cartoon look just like the toys yeah. and they look like crap yep. oh i agree with you on that the toys were really cool at the time because of the fact that like you were you were okay with look here's this really you know accurate looking semi or Lamborghini or whatever it was that okay yeah I can see how that's a robot that's cool and then you watch the cartoon and you get your sassy you you know you get you get satisfied with with the robots and all that stuff and the cool action and you didn't really care as much the fact that like your toy when it transformed into a robot looked a little goofy because the alt mode looked awesome it looked like a real vehicle mm -hmm. and and they don't do that anymore and very few. It, it, well, that's what we were talking about last week. We're disappointed with the sideburn that goes with the Haslab uh, this year. They didn't bother to go to Dodge and get a license for the Viper. Yeah, they just made a generic, goofy-looking be a fake car. That's one of the things that people hate it with the Has. At least me personally, with the Haslab Engine of Vengeance, they made a generic, goofy-looking car. Yeah. People are like saying, "Oh, it looks so cool." As a car guy, I thought it looked like crap because it's not a real car. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with a lot of the stuff. If it transforms into some rando sci-fi looking whatever, I don't care. Like yeah. I just want it for the robot mode. 
Like I don't. Now, the I don't only care. time I've really cared about when they do the, get alt modes with um, uh, that is when they do uh, the the game reverse stuff. Mm -hmm. They actually have pretty cool alt modes. They they actually put thought into the vehicle modes because the vehicle is part of the the gameplay. So they actually have a good vehicle. Well, and that's the thing. A lot of the alt modes are just there to support the robot mode, and they look. Let's be honest. They look like trash. I know what this dude looks like when he turns into his sci-fi tank. It looks stupid. It looks dumb. However, he makes for a great robot. So, you know, and, and I think there are some figures that it's the exact opposite, where they look really good on the... And I know most of them are now the, the Masterpiece and some of the other third-party ones out there that look really good as, like, they look like a real car or something like that. And oh, those like could be, those I'd, be okay. I'd, I'd be okay with having those on my shelf as mm -hmm. their alt mode. But these or, things, I don't care. Yeah. They don't They don't look good. Yeah, the... <laughs> It's just certain ones they'll do like really good alt modes, and most of them more they just kind of like weird generic alt modes like that. Uh, where I got it now, yeah. uh, well, I mean, look, it, it was it looked the original, the original that the original really nice off of Prime that came with that Soundwave 2 pack. Yeah. He's got a good looking alt mode, and he's got a good robot mode. Well, but they gave him a freaking gun he can't hold. <laughs> the, the original, I mean, the whole point of the original toy that they created a cartoon around was not to be really cool looking robots. They were to be they well, were mechs. Yeah, that's what that's what the, the, the you know, the original line from Japan was look at this like it looks like a model car, but oh wait, it also transforms into a robot. Yeah. They, they, they were weapons on. they were basically weapons platforms. They were not yeah. sentient robots. Yeah, and they and they they put a lot of effort into the vehicle mode. That's where they put all the effort into making it look awesome. Yep. And I mean, then then Transformers became popular, and people and the kids started caring about the robot modes instead of the vehicle modes. So, I mean, I get yeah. why they stopped focusing on the vehicle modes, because that's you know. But well, yeah. you, that's one of the things that uh, Transformers did really well that you cared about the character. Yeah, yeah. Gobots uh, were the Kmart Transformers of the industry. Now, I do the group like them held on. They were though. I mean, they were like first. Like the I remember, Gobot story was decent, but the character designs looked goofy. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I remember. Were. I remember Gobots coming out first. I remember oh, yeah. Gobots were, before Transformers was even a thing, and it wasn't by much. I think it was like, I think it was like six months. I don't even think it was that long. It felt a lot longer when I was a kid, but like I think it was only like like six months. It was like it was like Gobots came out in like. You know, early 1983, and then Transformers was late. You know, fall of 1983 or something like that. You know, Gobots was first, and I still to this day I love that that one robot. I can't remember which character it is, what his name is, where he's just this really cool futuristic looking car. But like when he transforms, the like whole mm -hmm. cab of the car is his head, and he has like these stick arms and legs or whatever. Like goofy as hell looking. But it was really cool because they they actually did, even though it was not a real car, they put a lot of effort into that alt mode for that one particular character. It looked dumb as hell as a it's kind of like the remember the the, the early uh uh Ironside and everything? They're yeah. when they transformed, they didn't really have like heads or anything. You know. Oh yeah, it's uh exact uh, like I was gonna bring up the point like Ironhide and Ratchet, they were Mix. They went to have little pilots in the seats, but yeah. so what Transformers did? They put a little face on the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> That's his head. Yeah. Yep. Psycho yeah. was the name of that car you were thinking about, the GoBot car. I forgot the name of the company, but they just Psycho, they really did not too long ago. Um, well, wasn't that car yeah. a bad guy? Uh, yes, he's a renegade. So, so because the main guy was Psykill, so they had one that was Psykill and Psycho. Yep. Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that thing looks so ridiculous, but I love the way that thing looks. And the when it's a car, car was awesome. awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome looking, even though it's not a real vehicle, they did a really good job like making that, that alt mode. Then you turn into this. And I think that's what they call like the Super GoBots. They were bigger scale. Yeah. The, they had two different scales of GoBots. You had like regular GoBots and Super GoBots. Which in toy form made no sense because uh, uh, Leader One was smaller than everybody else, and he's well. They, well, they actually had like a super version of Leader One too, so they actually had um, different sizes of the same characters. 
like you got uh, leader one, you got regular, which is this little one. That's the one you I got the, You got the super, which is the bigger one. Yeah, I had the little one. <laughs> yeah, it's weird how they do well, things. I had, I had, it was funny because, you know, they never really released a whole lot of GoBots. And they, they as soon as Transformers came out, GoBots got much, much cheaper. And I would find them at, uh, you know, I don't know, everybody, if you were in the 80s, like you remember five and dime stores, we had Emmy, Moses, and Woolworths. And so, like, GoBots became the official five and dime version of Transformers. Mm -hmm. Gee. So I had most of them. I even had uh, the big uh, uh, wannabe at at knockoff uh, base. Remember that? Uh, yep. I had that. I had I had a ton of GoBots by the because they got really cheap. You'd buy them really cheap because they were way cheaper than Transformers. Oh, and this is a great resource if people need to identify their Transformers or GoBots. You can actually identify it by color if you don't know the name. It's like a that Walker thing. It's like miscellaneous. Let's see if we can find it. I don't see it there. It was gray, wasn't it? That, uh, that uh, it had gray on it. It was gray, black, and then like either blue or purple. I can't remember. There it is. There you go. Yeah. I got that thing for Christmas. The command center. I mean, it's basically just a ripoff of an AT-AT, but it was, like, really cool. No. <laughs> so. Did it walk? Yeah. I didn't know if it was, I, I couldn't remember if it was motorized or not. You got a base. The base has, has a face. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, they had some, uh, yeah. Interesting figures like for GoBots, but they wasn't a lot. So this, this is all the GoBots they made. This list here. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't make a lot of them. When you go to Transformers, you got uh, broke down in series. Generation one, you go through three A through three groups, <laughs> three columns. And the yeah, Jen says Jason the Wheeled Warriors had a vehicle like that too. Yeah, they had one that was a, a, a another kind of quote unquote rip off of of an ad at, and it was that uh, big thing, and it had the claw pincher under the head. Mm -hmm. Jason the Wheeled Warriors, I've talked about many times because that was such a great show, and the, the at least the toys from the vehicle perspective were really cool, and it was one of those things that the toy line suffered because, um. Unlike Transformers, like we were just talking about, the toys they didn't they didn't make the toys to really play into the personality of any of the characters on the show because Jason Will Warriors had they they it was a cartoon that was made for a toy line and then they didn't tweak the toy line to fit with the cartoon. So it was a toy line where you had these little figures that were probably an inch and a half tall yep. that that were just bland one, you know, single color figures. That you know we're not supposed to be an actual character with really cool you know you know machines and, and vehicles and stuff like that. And what they should have done at the very least, like they should have like done something like I don't know, recolored the figures, done something with them, so that you could like see Jace, you know, instead of a random like gray looking kind of sort of human being looking figure, so that you could play into the to the to the lore of the cartoon and they didn't and so the toys didn't sell and the cartoon as great as it was which i mean to be honest in a lot of ways it was just a big ripoff of star wars in in a lot of ways but mm -hmm. it was still really good and like you know it, it wasn't uh it wasn't just some rando you know like, like they put effort into the stories and the characters maybe not as much as some stuff did but like a lot more than a lot of other kids cartoons at the time oh yeah but, uh, oh and next week uh we'll stay on the transformers uh, thing we get the first teaser trailer for the new uh transformers one animated movie transformers one does anybody know? I have not seen a synopsis of this movie yet. 
to know like is, is this is i don't this, think anybody really knows what it's going to be about it's i'm it's, just curious to know what, like, what universe does this play take place is this the bayverse is this some other all, universe? i think it's all new though that's the big thing yeah that's what i'm wondering it's, so, like, it's, I, I'm just curious, what is it now its own little universe and if so does it take place on earth does it take place on cybertron i mean cybertron. We'll when the trailer comes out i guess but uh much as i know it, it takes place on cybertron it's going to be a young optimus it might, might even be on ryan pax uh and he's voiced by grim salesworth chris hemsworth which better than all select uh like movie celebrities instead of voice actors in this yeah well, if they really wanted it to do well, they would have gotten They've got oh. Peter Cullen at least does something. Peter Cullen's got to do at least something for this. I know they're not having to be Optimus because they're doing a younger Optimus or whatever. But, like, I hope that, like, he they at least gave him a job doing something. Maybe he's playing Alpha Trion or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say if he's going to be. But Here's the thing, though. If they're having Chris Hemsworth's voice is much deeper than Peter Cullen's, so really, it could be Young Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. But what's I don't the think, difference? I don't think his voice is deeper than Peter Cullen's. His voice is deeper than it, uh, Peter Cullen's regular voice. If you've heard Peter Cullen talk when it, he's not uh, yeah. when he's doing the Prime voice, I don't. He's not deeper. I don't. I mean, Chris Hemsworth might be able to get his voice high enough where he could be Young Optimus, but oh. Yeah. Have you ever heard the story how Peter Cullen came up with the, the Predator noise? He does the Predator. Mm -hmm. He voiced Kong, and his throat was raw and bloody. Like, because he was doing all the growls and snarls, and he, like, destroyed his throat. And he couldn't really do much with his... Uh, doing vocalization when he did Predator, and he just made up the, the clicking noise for the Predator. Because that's about all he could do. <laughs> and they loved it. I wonder why I always like the like the predator more than the aliens. It's Peter Cole. <laughs> All right. I ordered some stuff this week, but toy wise, I haven't got anything in the in yet. But I did get my three D printer in. Yes, you did. And I've been printing parts. Canon sent me some SDL files and. I did some shoulder pads. I was like, hmm, I have that extra uh, Bruton head I painted up, the, the little bit smaller one. And I think I might do an armored version of Bruton. I got the gauntlets from uh, the Crimson Dynamo. And I use the shoulders to, for the Thor Buster. So I had two extra uh, fists and hands that fit. On I wonder the what that head would look like on a Beast Man figure. Hmm. That'd be curious to find out too. I got. I haven't opened up that Deluxe Beast Man yet. Oh. Party on, Darth! Well, I did pick up. Uh, I picked up a few things this week. I picked up that that uh, that Shockwave. I picked this little guy up because he was cheap. He was five bucks. Oh, nice. Like these. It's just, it's just a redo of, remember the old school ones that we had when we were kids? That's oh, all yeah. it is. It's just a cheap redo of that one. Ain't nothing ain't nothing crazy about that. I got the uh, the Revoltex slash Amazing Yamaguchi fucking Deathstroke, which is decent. I'm not a big fan of the Revoltex stuff with those weird that shoulder articulation crap, but it's a decent look. Mm -hmm. And it's cheap, so I'm not going to not gonna argue with cheap so but oh, hello, hello. then i rolled into target and found some cool stuff oh nice so i found me joker ah sweet the new joker figure sitting just that's, sitting and that's the, the one way they didn't do the the shell shading right right well they've actually done two sh two now this is the second one. So the first way they did the 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 one with was the one with Killer Croc and Batman and Two Face and I don't remember who else. But that wasn't a build a figure wave. This one's the build a build a figure wave 
with uh, uh, the robot Batman, Commissioner Gordon, Joker, and Riddler. And it's got that um, uh, lockup build a figure pieces in it. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got him. Uh, lockdown, isn't it? Huh? Is it lockdown? It's lockdown, right? Lockup. Oh, his name's Lockup? I thought it was Lockdown. Well, it's Lockdown says, is a transformer. It says Lockup on the package, so. Oh, I'm, I guess I'm getting my names confused. Sorry. Uh, and then I got Commissioner Gordon. They had both of them. Didn't they show like the previous, like the some of the pictures with the cell shading? No, uh, I don't remember. That'd be great if, it, if it, I've, or I'm a bit misremembering. It'd be great if they got started to get rid of it. Uh, actually, there is a little bit of cell shading on him. I don't know if you can see it, like right there in the on the legs. Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Like on the inside of the leg, just slightly. Ah, so he's, maybe that's what it is. But it's not. Things. It's not very noticeable. It doesn't like go across their faces and crap like that. Yeah, I can't tell if Joker has. It. That's good. If I can't tell if he has cell shading, that means if he does, it's barely there. The, they're actually using the old molds from the DC Direct figures yeah. or DC collectibles, whichever it was at the time. Uh, so McFarlane actually didn't design or engineer these figures. So, so oh yeah, the articulation. Add bad. their city cell shading on there. But uh, and I got uh, got Big Boa. Nice. Picked him up. Want to do a? I want to do a? Want to want to find a, a, a one twelve scale Sylvester Stallone head to do a head swap on. <laughs> And then rolled into Target, and they had Retro Scarlet. Sweet. Yay. Which has not even shipped on Amazon yet. The pre-orders haven't even shipped out on Amazon yet. So neither is Big Bad. Ockham, or, or Target had them, and I was like, sweet. So Big Bad, Big Bad hasn't shipped theirs either. Yeah. Well, Target's got them. Well, I got to go get them, I guess. I okay. think mine, mine has shipped from Pulse, but I just haven't got it yet. So I picked all. That's what I picked up this week. Is that stuff? I don't think I picked up anything else that I'm aware of. Um, have I? No, I haven't. I'm messing with this dude. This is the one I was asking you about the other day for that uh, sculpting, the sculpting putty or clay or whatever. Mm -hmm. like fixing this dude up because he's a shitty action figure. But notice how his legs come together. Yes. Yeah. So for those that don't know how to do that, is actually very easy. It's just I just made more room on the upper thighs with a Dremel, so that way his legs actually close all the way like they're supposed to, instead of him standing there, because his legs only went to there. For anybody that had this figure, it sucked. Like he just stood there like that, and you just gotta make a little bit of extra room with some uh, with a Dremel, and you'll be good to go. So I'm working on him. I gotta get some. I took that. Stu I hate that. Thing he's got around his shoulders so i took it off but it leaves this this gaping hole in his chest shaped like i don't know professor x scarred him or some shit i don't know <laughs> so i gotta fill that in i'm gonna do a repaint on him and play around with him to make it a decent figure so but, uh, and then i think i'm finally done i think with my ghost rider i got my chain in the right size chain the right size chain in now so can actually yeah i think that's about all i'm gonna do with him well i so, just checked hasbro pulse both my retro card at duke and scarlet has shipped oh nice uh their next destination is north carolina hmm. so who's next probably me i guess so the first thing I got, which this was for my wife, Glenn already made a comment about this earlier before we started. <laughs> I don't know what you're <laughs> She's like, he gives this to you and then just goes, hint, hint. Mm -hmm. She, she yeah. wants you to wear that. Did, did, did she get you a banana hammock as well? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> then I got this from Ollie's, $4.00. Rick Flair. So I got him, and then I got some Marvel Legend. So I got, let's see, I got this one right here to go with my X Men shelf that I'm currently working on. Very good. So I got that. I know. I got it just he, today. He is very I, short, though. 
He is not short. He is. He that is. figure is very short. They made the torso very short. Yeah. Oh, short. I know. Then I got this right here. The Infinity Saga Winter Soldier Captain America. And then... What else do I got? Let me see. Then I got this. Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That's all I got, so... <laughs> That's all I got, yeah. That's all I got this week. Nice little haul. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Well, I don't have them in yet, but I got the Scarlet and Duke coming. I ordered the... I got the Missing Link cartoon version, which is just the cab only, and the cab and tra uh, trailer, all both coming from Big Bad Toy Store. And the the Darth uh, last Darth Vader right. recorded, and they had a one day sale yesterday. And I picked up a couple more Herculeses for six, sixteen dollars. So I like them for customs. And I went ahead, since I got the Super Seven Tank Megatron, I go in and get the Optimus to go with it. Just to basically have two display together. Uh, that will do it for me for like Super 7 Transformers. Uh, I think that may be all I got ordered this week. I've been debating about getting the Pengu, like 18 inch tall Optimus Prime. Oh, yeah. It's that cool, though. I think it's really cool. I, I keep seeing pictures of it. It's like, mm, what is it? I, keep I finally saw pictures next to my uh, big non transformable one. It's almost the exact same height. It's just a little bit shorter than that. That one's truly 18 inches, and the Pangu's like 17 point something other. And they're very close to being the same size. Just that one's just bulkier, but the Pangu actually transforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so make, I kind of want to see what them do a Megatron that size. But there's several like third part. That's, that's what they kind of what they call it, like a fourth party. They took the design from Magic Square, their like masterpiece style Optimus Prime, and stole their design and upscaled it to the eight, 18 inches tall. Which the Magic Square Prime is a great figure. Uh, now you can just get it in super size, which looks good displayed with Marvel Legends. No, it's not true 112 scale, but it's close enough. Yeah. Three D print to one one to one laser beak, which uh if you consider like one to one just a regular like full size cassette, the Mastermind Creations actually makes those. I didn't get to their laser beak and buzz all because it just looks weird because they're so big. The other ones are like, like Steel Jaw, you know, Rumble, Frenzy, Eject, Rewind. Those are fine, the bigger scale, but the birds seemed weird when they made them like supersized. And, uh, Oh, the leaked popcorn bucket for the Transformers movie. You got that one. Is it? Is it? Is it another giant fleshlight that looks like Optimus Prime? No, it looks like the thing that ate Optimus Prime. It's like a big bloated thing. It's not as cool as when they did the uh, the Bumblebee movie one. They had really cool. They had Optimus in his vehicle mode, and the top of the trailer opened up. And yeah. that's where you put popcorn and you put the drink in the cab. And the smokestacks were like straws. But this is not as clever as that. Uh, so if we're last to get the knockoff Mesco figures in this week, uh, other than that, we only got the uh, Heartbreak. One of the Michelle's uh, brackets broke while I was at work. Oh, no. Oh, uh, that's hopefully nothing broke. I've 
I've been sitting in here. Uh, my place I was renting before, I had, like I was, list- I was watching TV one time and I heard this big crash in the collection room. It was like, before I bought my house, it was like, went in there like everything's on the floor. <laughs> on that one side. Like, no. Oh, uh did get some news with the the Masterpiece 60, which is a uh, Jinrai. We got like the pre-order prices up. I think the cab is like 169 by itself. You get the whole thing, it's 269. Uh it's also the last masterpiece Optimus front uh, last masterpiece in that Takar is gonna make. They're gonna uh, start a new line afterwards called MPD. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but they're going to be smaller and pretty much cost the same. So they're changing scales. They're not going to do the old masterpiece scale no more. So they're basically telling everybody, screw you. We're going to do our own thing. And the third party going to be like bringing in the money. Because people are going to continue their masterpiece collections just buying third party. I heard a lot of people were pissed off with that that Optimus. I heard a lot of people were like, "This is the last one they give us. This piece of shit." Oh, once once Clear Pictures got uh, showed up, I was out. I was not into it no more. I was like, "Oh, good kind of ho!" Like, "Oh, sweet, they're going to do the masterpiece Jinrai." And it's like I love Power Master Optimus Prime. When they showed the Clear Pictures, it's like, "Holy crap, that thing is a piece of junk." Yeah. yeah. It looks like the hands look like old toy biz, like freaking. Hands like that, the weird hinge and uh, the design is not nice. The HasLab is actually so much better design and figure than that uh, last master, last quote unquote masterpiece. It's like very disappointing, which uh, saves me with some money. Though. Well, I'm not going to buy it because it look, looks like crap. Yeah. And abandoning masterpiece, that's like their flagship thing. That just makes no sense. I'm back. So, uh, I don't know if you uh, caught any of that, Queen. It's like Hasbro Takara officially announced that MP60 is the last masterpiece Transformer. Yeah, I heard about that. Thank and, God. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> it, it, they're going to start a new line called LPG. Yeah. And they're going to be basically the same price, just smaller figures, probably less, less engineering. Mm-hmm. So they're just telling everybody just go shop at third party. Pretty much. If you want to keep con- uh, continuing collecting masterpiece scale figures, your only option is third party. Which, well, you know, I I hate to say it, but sometimes the third party stuff is better than what. Hasbro with your car. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, I mean, it's a win-win for Transformers fans. Well, I've quit for years. I've quit buying the car as masterpiece figures. They were overpriced and the level engineering and quality just wasn't there anymore. And they, they did like a, the Tropic Thunder. They went full tune. You don't ever go full tune. That's true. Uh, I like what X Transpot's been doing. They've been making, they've been finally filling in some of the holes in Masterpiece that's been, people have been wanting for decades. So, and when I say decades, because Masterpiece started in 2001, <laughs> we wanted to, the battle chase, uh, battle chargers for the Septicons, <clears throat> run a buck, run them out, run a buck and run about. And we mm-hmm. finally got those from X Transpot's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great figures. But, um, I guess your name's mixed up, but the the the, the Lotus had stuck uh, thigh swivels. I actually ended up doing a tutorial on the channel how to fix that. Yeah. But and there's like a little tab you needed like a round off. It's square it's too square when you try to uh, peg it in, it won't go into plug peg in properly without like really flexing everything, but all you have to do is just bevel one side of the tab. Speaking right of in. pegging in. Oh, hey now. Hey now. No, I'm keeping it clean, guys. No. I'm keeping it clean. I mean, look. 
we we have Star Wars black chrysanthemum figures. Yes, Do anybody have one? Okay. Hey if man, you, look, if, if I don't need to know what kind of weird no, toy no, fetish no, 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 no. You're into when it comes to, to pegging. There's, there's a nice fix that you can make for your black chrysanthemum to give him better um, bicep uh, butterfly swivel uh, uh, range of movement. There you go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can get your black chrysanthemum to do this now. Oh, nice! Like that. So you heat it. You basically put him in hot water. You know, his um, he's got dumbbell joints for his uh, shoulders. They pop out, and then these little things just sit in the shoulder socket. You just pull them out, snap them back in there, and then your black chrysanthemum can do this. Look at that! He can almost look down the barrel. That's that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was watching a, a review um, from Robo from uh, Robo Don't Know, and he passed on that information that somebody else had did. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I tried it, and sure enough, I, I like that figure even more now. But by the way, that figure is like going back. on clearance everywhere. Oh yeah, but oh yeah, back a little bit dollars and a half. Yeah, I'm seeing him like Walmart's putting them on clearance. I saw him at Target on clearance seen them online on clearance i don't know why i don't know why they made so many of them that they have to put them on clearance like i guess they thought oh it's another another wookie this is going to be a home run pump out a ton of them well it's us because they overpriced them they overpriced the figure as well well, well yeah, they're, like, they're, they're like, being very they're liberal with the term deluxe figure anymore it's like when that one of those Spider Mans, they made it a deluxe figure and it didn't come with anything extra. It didn't have full sets of hands. They call it a deluxe figure. It was the PS5 Spider Man. Oh, yeah. And they priced it at like a ridiculous, like like 40 bucks or something like that. It was and 37. It didn't come with anything extra. And the colors are wrong. <laughs> oh, it was. It was bad. I got like a buddy who bought that figure. It was bad. Yep. Yep. What? Nothing? No? What? I didn't say anything. Well, in in in, in, uh, in more Transformers news, you're not, getting rid of what you say. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Is is, is what we got? There was that uh, CinemaCon this weekend. And uh, they did the they did the actual official announcement that uh, we are going to be getting a Transformers GI Joe crossover movie. Yep. Woo! Now, now there's a good side and a downside. It is good side. It's produced by Steven Spielberg. Downside, it's also produced by Michael Bay. So, what? I don't oh, he's know. gone. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know which way this movie going. Now that being said, look, Bumblebee is the best hands down transformers movie ever and it was produced by michael bay so there is hope okay there there is hope um and michael bay because michael bay he also produced uh, 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 uh rise of the beast too which is i think the second best transformers movie ever made both of which happen to be the only two that michael bay didn't direct but he, he produced both of them so just because he's producing on it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad and Steven Spielberg is producing as well. So that's a good thing. Uh, they haven't gotten a director yet. Obviously, it hasn't started film. There's a whole, I mean, you know, this is still years away at this point. But, um, I mean, this is something that that geeks like us have been wanting for decades. <laughs> so uh, I hope they don't screw it up. I really do. If we'll it, see. If it's, not made you know. properly, if it's not made properly, then it's not going to succeed. The G.I. Joe characters need to look like the G.I. Joe characters. It can't uh, be maybe not the actors, but the outfits. The outfits need to look at least 75% accurate. If not, it's not going to succeed. The Transformers in any incarnation will be all right, as long as they're... I, I, don't, I don't think would, people would like to regression back to the Michael Bay Transformers. Yeah, the, that's what really, I was about to say. As long as you don't looking messes. Of the innards. Yeah, you know, you can still keep it high-tech, but keeping it old school as well you know there's a way to do it well i mean they did it in the last two movies the designs in the last two movies were really good 
Bumblebee and, and Rise of the Beast, they I thought they did a really good job. There were still some some ties to the the, the Bay former look, but not a lot. They were mostly, you know, they mostly tried to stick to more, you know, classic looks for the characters, and I think that worked, especially in especially in in Bumblebee. So they just need to stick the landing with that for that part. They need to understand that that that's what people want. I'm sure they do. We'll see if they do it. But. So are we going to start fan cast? Who we pick to play who? And I still say, look, I mean, we, we talked about it when Rise of the Beast came out last year. I say John Cena plays Duke. He was in Bumblebee. Yeah. Uh, it makes perfect sense. You take that character and he becomes a founding member of G.I. Joe. And you have him, his code name is Duke. And you have him do be Duke. Um, I think John Cena, you know. Scarlett Johansson would be great. great for Scarlett. Just saying. Well, she don't have to worry about answering their own name. Her name's already that, Scarlett. That too. But she's just hot as hell. So I'd, I'd rather see her as Scarlett. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean I'm just saying you, you you've you've laid some groundwork there in in the movies. You've got this this force that was already in Bumblebee. You've got, you know, you you bring it, you know, you've got the character from uh, Rise of the Beast. I forget his name, but you mm -hmm. can certainly make him have have joined up and become a Joe. So you've got a character from Bumblebee in John Cena, and you don't have to make him Duke, you make him somebody. Right, yeah. give him give him one of the code names. <laughs> right, you got the character from the last one. You make him somebody, you know, um, and you just you you bring those two universes Aku, together. You laid it out perfectly. Aku just said we killed the movie. Great job by casting John Cena as Duke. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Jo John Cena is a, a John Cena is really good when he wants to be. The problem yeah. is John Cena. Half the time, picks really stupid movies. John Cena can be incredibly he entertaining. He could, he, he could be under a bad contract too. Like Jason Stanton, yeah. for years was stuck with that group, wouldn't let him out. He, yeah. That's why he kept doing those stupid crank movies and all that stuff because it was his contract. Yeah, J J uh, John Cena, when he's in a good movie, can shine. He he yeah. is good at action, and he's really good at comedy surprisingly like he's he's really good at comedy you ever seen that movie uh blockers that they had to change the name because the, the original name of the movie was cock blockers if you've never seen the movie blockers with john cena where it's him and and two other characters going around trying to make sure their daughters don't lose their virginity on prom night it is fucking hilarious and john cena is absolutely fucking funny as shit in that movie like the dude can be the dude. I don't. I would not call him a good actor. However, I would say he's really good in action movies, and he is really good. He's he's got good comedic timing. Um, if if he, they he, he needs, to, he needs to let it go though, he's going bald. And he just just needs to do the rock. Yeah, he's his shave, shave his fucking head. Yeah. He's like, it's okay. It's all right to be bald. Yeah, nobody gives a shit, dude. I mean, I ain't gonna worry about that, but but it's okay to be bought. Well, gentlemen, I hate to cut and run, but I gotta close up and get ready to go home. But you guys have a great evening, and until next time, you have a good one, Queen. Yep. Huh. Yeah, Sin for Life's got a good point there. Anybody, uh, anybody doubting John Cena's acting hasn't seen Peacemaker or The Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was—he was the only best part in Ricky Stenicki. But uh, man, I don't know what's happened since his last role, or whatever what he's done. He's lost a ton of muscle mass. He showed up yeah. at WrestleMania, and he's like half his normal size. Yeah, he's ripped, but he's not anywhere near as bulky as he used to be. Which I think I that know. works better since he's doing movies now, Ooh. because it he's is a lot harder to cast him in stuff being huge as opposed to just being ripped. I, I kind of like this idea, but the but the problem is that snake guys don't talk. That's so, true. And he wears a mask, so you'd never see him. I mean, Ray Park did a really good snake eyes, though. 
Yeah, I, I, Snake Eyes is one of those characters where uh, I don't really think Lungs through like can do good action. That's all you need for Snake Eyes. Yeah, you you just need a really good stunt man. Stunt man. Snake Eyes. Like that's all you need. Was Ray Park was great as Snake Eyes in those two GI Joe films though. But you don't really need a big name you actor. An actor. You don't need an actor to be Snake Eyes. Unless you're just doing the flashbacks before he loses his voice and he gets scarred up. Yeah, you don't you don't like, need anybody. You a real origin, not that crappy movie they did. Yeah, and you don't even you don't need to cast an actor. You just need a stunt guy to do to do Snake Eyes, and that's fine. Yeah, you don't need to give a personality to somebody like that. Like, you, you know, yeah. There's no reason to spend money on that. Spend Ooh. spend money getting a good actor for for Duke hey, and Friends he, and Oh and Shipwreck. He's and British. Let me Big Ben. The what? And since he's British, let me Big Ben. Oh yeah, yeah. Bring in Big Ben. I mean, you guys wouldn't want to see him again. No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, first of all, I mean, there's so much wrong. Look, I did not hate the movie the way some people did. It's not a good movie, but like as a shitty kung fu movie i was like nah, it wasn't that bad like i understand why nobody liked it and it was shitty as a gi joe movie but like i didn't hate the movie maybe because i didn't pay for it you know what i mean like i waited till it came out on amazon and watched it for free so i was like eh, whatever right so i didn't like some people despise that movie as just a rando fucking you know off the cuff whatever movie i was like nah, that's <laughs> fine but like i mean that is movie. not snake eyes at all snake eyes oh, yeah. that's not, it's not it's like I don't know who that character. Yeah, no, is. People are like, whoa, whoa. Uh, well, Storm Shadow. Larry Hama was like signing off on it. Yeah, it's the biggest paycheck he ever got. Yeah. No shit. They don't make. I hate to break it to everybody. All our like great comic book people, uh, people we've grown to be fans of over the years, that were like great writers and artists. Marvel DC pays shit. They only make money from like the movie royalties. If they they have a part in creating the character. That's the only time they need to make any, any real money. Yeah. Uh, but they never got the recognition and like pay it as for pay. That's why they're 60 years old and still going to cons, unfortunately. The, Aku, just said, Aku just said, Peacemaker is a show is just as offensive as fake Mandarin. What? Peacemaker what just said... Show. He just said it's offensive. Offensive? How? Like intention? It is offensive. Like if you're, if you're if easily you're... triggered, don't watch that show because it's got a lot of offensive shit in it. But like, <laughs> offensive in the way that that fake Mandarin was offensive. No, Peacemaker is great. It was an awesome show. Definitely. I didn't finish it. I thought it was. A, you gotta yeah. finish it. You gotta finish it, Jared. It's good. Oh, dude! No, no. I don't have to do nothing. <laughs> it's great. You can man. buy the Walmart DVD, the complete season. Well, Peacemaker saying DVD. it's not. It's not Peacemaker. I don't give a shit if it's Peacemaker. First of all, Peacemaker's a character I don't give a rat's fuck about. Like, I don't care about Peacemaker. I've never cared about Peacemaker. Is a dude running around with a toilet bowl on his head in the comics? Like, I don't care about Peacemaker. They well, actually made Peacemaker an yeah. interesting character. Well, like, it's, well, it's understandable. It's one of his favorite favorite characters. So, I mean, it's Hollywood. I will not apologize for not liking Peacemaker in the comics. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I like mean, everybody likes certain. Just, if, if, when, they, when they don't do, we lost Jason. Yeah. He must hit the back button. But uh, um. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I don't blame anybody man. not liking a their version of the character not being portrayed on the, on the screen. We, we, you're fans of a certain thing. If if they don't do it right, uh, do the character justice to what what you you're a fan of. I understand that it's not like. Oh yeah, I get that. But there, there's also a difference between um, there's also a difference between like liking a specific version of something, and then like not like like not understanding when something can be different but still be good like we've got and i get it because we've gotten so much shit where that you know look at look at that last fantastic four movie right 
they changed so much about the Fantastic Four that that fan four stick, whatever the hell it was, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was it was just awful. It's an awful movie. However, there are times when something comes out that's very different from the source material, but is still good on its own to you know as as its own thing, right? I think Peacemaker is one of those. It might not be comic accurate. It's still a good show. It's still an entertaining good show on its own, right? Like there are plenty of things that I don't like because they're not the version of the thing that I like. But I won't say like I can completely understand why other people would, you know, whether it's TV shows or movies or whatever. I'd be like, well, I I don't I would rather have this version of a character or this version of the story. But I totally understand that it's still a good thing. It's just not my preference for that particular character or story or whatever. Like for me, Peacemaker is one of those things. Like whether you like that that version of all those characters, which is much more goofy and and uh, you know um, sarcastic, and to be honest, kind of dead pulled up. Um, oh, it was totally dead pulled up. Yeah. Even if you don't like that for those characters, like it's still a really good show. It's a very well done show. It's got a lot of great action, great stories, great actors, you know, great dialogue. Like it's still a really good show, even if it's not a version of Peacemaker or, you know, whatever that people like. You know what I mean? It's kind of, and, and the reason I say that is because it's the same thing with like uh, Man of Steel. A lot of people that I know hate Man of Steel because they're like, oh, that's not my version of Superman. I'm like, well, it's still a retardedly good movie. Like, it's still a really good movie and it's the best Superman movie we've ever gotten. So, like, I get that it's not like hashtag not my Superman or whatever. Like, I get that. I, as a Superman purist, I grew up with, you know, hardcore. I grew up so pure on Superman that I don't like the Chris Reeves versions of those of, of, of Superman. Like I like Chris Reeves, but I don't like those movies because that's not the Superman that I was reading in the comics. You know, he he he. You know, I'm not gonna get that's a whole other conversation about you know all the reasons in those movies why hashtag not my Superman, right? But I still look at at least the first two movies and say, well, yeah, those are still really good movies especially for their time and i understand why people love those movies even Which, if i don't i, I love it. the christopher reeve movie like the first two and uh, especially the donner cut the second one and, and i totally get it man like we, I, oh, I, I fall in the category where i'm not as a for a superman movie i'm not crazy about men of steel but it's still a good movie yeah and it, it's fundamentally Completely uh, not understanding the character with Man of Steel for me, the, the people who made it. Yeah, and well, and see, for me, that's what the Chris Reeves movies are. Like but I grew it, up like with Post Crisis, reading Post Crisis Superman. Yeah, the the, the 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 Chris Reeves movies for me are like they're just big egregious mistakes in the in that in those movies. I'm like, that's not Superman at all. Like, and we've talked about this before. There's no way in hell Superman would ever give up his powers just to fucking sleep with Lois Lane, just to be with her. He would never leave the world defenseless for Lois Lane, as much as he loves her. He would never do that. No version of Superman would ever do that. And there's just things like that in those movies that I watch and I go, eh, it's not Superman to me. You they put that kind of stuff, though, in like storylines so a lot afterwards, though. Uh, uh, from the, that point on, we're... Yeah, because they got it from that movie. Which is, you know, not something that Superman would would have ever done. But um, I'm not trying to get into a Superman debate. But like we, well, the point is, we all have the things One, that we two, like in certain and characters more. that we like that make us like certain things, and we have certain versions of characters that make us not like other things. But like, you can still look mm -hmm. at something objectively and go, "But that's still good." Like I still, I still think it's a good movie. Or, you know, and I understand why other people like it. I totally understand why people like the first two Superman movies. I don't like them, but I totally get it. They are good movies. Like, they were they were great representations uh, for for comic book geeks in the, the late 70s and early 80s. They were great movies. A lot of us in our age group grew up with them as, like, the first superhero movies we had ever seen. You know what I mean? Like, I completely understand why people like those movies 
And I will never say those are not good movies. I don't like them, but they're good movies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. that's the same thing with Man of Steel. A lot of people don't like Man of Steel. Cool. I love Man of Steel, but like, either way, it's a good movie, right? Whether you like that interpretation or don't, or like what, you know, uh, that did Superman, that was the big thing. Superman doesn't kill. Well, I mean, he does, and he has only when necessary, but whatever, you know, you don't like that version. I get it. Like, but you, they've actually did like really big stories too in the comics where he's felt so much guilt. He actually, uh, from killing Zod and his, his soldiers, uh, like the, in the comics where he would actually like was actually fighting crime like Batman in the streets and has a different persona because it was like so much guilt. Yeah, like the one story, what happened to the man of tomorrow, like that one. Remember where he went in the gold get when the gold kryptonite room and got rid of his powers because he killed. I still have yeah. that. I still have that one, that novel. I'm not for, uh, familiar with that one. You can look it up on YouTube. It's called "What Happened to the Man of Tomorrow." It's a what if story, but it's a really good one. I didn't, re uh, didn't read a lot of the um, yeah. battle. I'm it, actually it, to me, it makes way like, and I, and I, because I know what story you're talking about, and I hate the idea that Superman would ever give up his powers, but it makes way more sense Superman would give up his powers because he thought he was out of control and might actually hurt people. No. Then I love Lois Lane, so I want to be just a normal person with her. Like that, like makes, that it either. makes way more sense for him to give up his powers if he thought he had gone out of control, and the because the one thing, the most important thing to him period end of story is to try to help people that is that is a core belief in who clark kent is not superman's he, he you know he's the exact opposite of batman clark kent is who he is superman is a is, is a costume he puts on which is the exact opposite of batman and it's yeah. what i love about clark kent is because he is good and pure and wants to do something right and so and it is reflected how his parents raised him so that's what that's about, oh. fundamentally what's wrong, I feel is wrong with Man of Steel, is well. See, I feel the exact opposite. I feel that's what's right with Man of Steel because in Man of Steel we were watching. Jonathan taught him not to let people die and not to expose himself. They were not good people. Should should we the call this me, to me Man of Steel is seeing a story that I have never seen before, which is the complex interactions between him and his parents and the moments in time where he went from being that kid who did not understand who he was, who thought his mm -hmm. parents hated him because of how he was raised, who ran off and then realized that everything, every time his dad had been hard on him, every time his mother had said something, everything, they were, they were raising him to be a hero. And it's the, mo that movie is the moment that Clark gets it. That move, that mo the movie is the moment that everything that his dad had told him, the way he was raised, everything comes together and he realizes who he is and who his parents raised, his real parents, not 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 Jor-El, his real parents and why they raised him the way they did. He gets it. He understands what, everything that his dad does. That movie is that moment where he figures all that out to become the hero. That's why I like that because we never... We've never gotten. We certainly never gotten a movie about that. We've never gotten a TV well, show about Jonathan that. Sacrifices himself in the movie for no reason. Superman is uh, Clark is so fast. He could have saved him, and nobody ever even seen it. Can, should we change the title of this stream to a Superman debate? Well, yeah. Man, I, I love toy comic movies and, and I, I shows, love talking about this. This is a subject yeah. that I've gotten into many fights with okay. friends over. Can I, is, I, I want to make this one defending comment. Man of Steel and and saying I don't like the original Chris Reeves movies. I've had many All conversations right. that didn't end well because <laughs> I, I've I've gotten into big fights over this. So, oh, well, I, 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 the other I, 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 way, I, guess this, I can I can. Just with friends all the time. It's just, <laughs> oh, I know. Some people I can't, and like I, th this is where this is where you but figure. I, out I exactly know. understand it, exactly where, what your point is with your stuff, yeah. though, what your way you like yours, and I just have a different viewpoint with with. Exactly. with and, I, like and I understand the same thing about you. It's just surprising how many people, because we're on the internet, you have these conversations, and then they're like, 
fuck you. And they just never talk to you again because of some opinion on a movie. And you're like, really? Is that an adult way? Well, I'm done. I'm <laughs> no, I had this, I had this same debate with all my friends about star Wars. Um, and, uh, and, and, and specifically like if, it, whether like I have a lot of a lot of friends that like and I and I hate I hate the the sequel trilogies too they're they're absolute garbage and trash, but I still maintain that like rise of the, rise of the or, or uh, 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 Force Awakens excuse me Force Awakens of- is still a, is still a better movie than Phantom Menace, like oh, it's yeah. a better, it's a better more entertaining movie those I mean as a as both- a sequel trilogy those movies both- are trash. Um, I they both know, have. Mary Sue's in the sh- movies too, so yeah. But I like I find personally, Force Awakens a more entertain. Like I can't get through Phantom Menace. I usually like dip out until Duel of the Fates kicks on at the end, because most mm-hmm. of that movie is just so horrible that until it gets to like the the third act, I can't watch that movie. But I can actually sit through all of Force Awakens and be fairly entertained by it. Yeah. And so I get into fights with 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 Star Wars fans of mine. Oh, always, friends of mine. The all the time. Menace is a mess of a movie. Oh, it's it's awful. Now, it's not as awful. bad as like you know. It's not Force. as bad as you know, Force Awakens or or Rise of Skywalker. I will give you. I'll grant you that those two movies are worse. Yeah. But it's it's still worse than the first of those sequel trilogies. You know. Um, oh yeah. So, and yeah, I've gotten into so many fights about that. The other one I get into fights about all the time is. Uh, Luke Skywalker's portrayal in in uh, 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 I'm bl- I'm mixing up the names of all these movies. The second one, the, the second of the sequel trilogy. What is it? I just uh, said it, and I've already it. Was it the Last Jedi? Last Jedi. Thank you. Like I, I I I out of all the things that make that a horrible horrible movie, I don't have a problem with Luke Skywalker's portrayal of it. And I know even Mark Hamill does. Like I get it, and I know like. Even Mark Hamill, like, and and a lot of fans are like, no, Luke well, Skywalker's a hero, and he's this, and he's that, and all that stuff. Well, and Luke Skywalker, I, I won't disagree on that one too. It's like the, the Luke Skywalker was a character that never gave up on Darth Vader, which was some everybody else would say was irredeemable. Nothing, never thought about was was it, until when he found out who he was, what he was, what happened to him. He never thought about giving up on him. Was going to redeem him. He wanted to kill him before he found out what he was. Yeah. But when he found out, he never gave up. And that's why brought him back to the light, to the light side of the force. And I know, like we were talking about before, what they show in the the Last Jedi is like, it is uh, Re- Kylo Ren's version of what he, he was yeah. telling the story. You yeah. know, what? that never really never happened. The movie did not explain that. You have to interpret to interpret that. Is the because Ryan Johnson sucks. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Johnson's awful. He's so awful. Yeah, and so he my, made it. He made the movie to piss half the fans off. Yeah, he you know he intentionally him and what's her face did it intentionally. Yep. So, but my my other thing is and 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 I can't. This is where I my biggest. Uh, the, the biggest issue I've, I've come into is, is that um, a lot of people hated the idea that Luke Skywalker would go off to a planet where nobody would find him and live as a curmudgeon alone and kind of just give up and, and never want to be, you know, and be like, I guess this is it. Cause not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And my point has always been. And welcome Cannon. Hey, I, I, I want to go my, back to the Superman discussion here in a second. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me get this out real quick. My point has always been that if you look at who trained Luke, right? Like Obi Wan was with him for like three days. Okay, he was with Yoda for several weeks. Is kind of the roughest estimate we can come up with. Even though in the movie it seems like he's only with him for a couple of days, it, it's probably it's supposed to be like two to three weeks that he was training with Yoda. So his. The only example of a Jedi he has for more than a couple of days with Kenobi, right, is a Jedi who, when things went bad, went off to a planet in the middle of nowhere to not be found and live alone. Like, he literally became Yoda. And to me, as a, as a fan growing up with those movies, I went, well, that makes perfect sense. 
Shit went really bad for him, just like it did for Yoda. Things did not turn out the way he wanted with his Jedi Academy. It would make sense that he would follow the example of his teacher, which was, I guess I fucked up. I can't fix it. I'm going to banish myself into the middle of nowhere exactly like Yoda did. To me, that always made sense. It didn't piss me off. Like, yeah, I want. I would love to see Luke be the hero, but like the fact that he wasn't and that he did exactly what Yoda did did not upset me. It 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 story wise well, made complete sense that he uh, would do the same thing Yoda did. The story wise, though, the whole the, the one of the contentious points on that part is where the hell did the first order come from? They never explained really why they're still when why they're still called rebels and they're not the actual government. Dude, that whole part of everything made no god like. It kind of made so. First of all, the name First Order is dumb. They should have just called them Imperial Remnants. A, okay. Second, in the first movie, in in uh, uh, Force Awakens, it makes a little more sense where they actually go to the point of explaining that okay, the new uh, the New Republic has formed a government that does not think that the First Order or Imperial Remnants or whatever we end up calling them is a threat and there's some outlier on the outer rim that we don't need to pay attention to so they they don't give it any credence and they don't dedicate any time or effort to trying to stop them because they don't think they're a real threat and so leia goes off and kind of does what she did before which is kind of start forming her own quote unquote rebellion to fight them because the new republic won't new republic saying no we don't think it's a threat we don't want to put together. We don't want to. We don't want to do what we did thirty years ago and have another big, you know, galactic civil war. We think you're being paranoid, Leia. You know, we're not giving you any funds. We're not giving you any troops. We're not giving you shit. And and they 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 put enough of that in the first movie that it made sense. And then they shit on that completely through the next two movies, and made it seem like no, 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 yeah, no. There was really a rebellion, and all, like they went. And it was, again, it was all it was all what's his face, jo uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Johnson. Roundhead, just come roundhead. Everything up. I'm not saying like J.J. Abrams is some great filmmaker. Like he has his place, but like he's not. But at least in the first movie, I felt like he was attempting to do something kind of cool, even if he's not really good at it. Whereas Ryan Johnson was like, we're just going to screw everything up for everybody and try and piss off people as much as possible. Okay. Circle back. Made a point. Let's circle oh. back. Let's go back to Superman. <laughs> Superman. Okay. Go ahead. All right, you ready? Yeah. Uh, was a great match point saying if all the comics, books, and games portrayed Luke like that, it might make more sense. Is what Aku said. So he was kind of agreeing with Matt on that about Luke being Yoda. And then well, the problem, another the problem person is we don't. Asked why. The problem is we don't have anything because they killed all of the extended universe. So there's nothing, there's no, when that movie came out, there is no canon for Luke outside of the movies. Oh, if you're, if we, I think it's stupid because I think the expanded universe is better than anything. Like I think the, the stories that we got in the 90s, first thing they did was kill the expanded universe. Yeah. I think the stories we got in the 90s and 2000s from the expanded universe are better than anything Star Wars we've ever gotten. Those books, you know, that were written like the, the, the Timothy Zahn stuff, the, the X-Wing rogue squadron stuff, the truce at Bakura, you know, like all these stories that were put out were some of the best sci-fi story writing and best star Wars writing ever. The fact that mm -hmm. they just flushed all that down the toilet pisses me off to no end, but in Canon, like there is no evidence that Luke Skywalker is anything other than when we last saw him, which is at the end of return of the Jedi. You know what I mean? There's there's no evidence of that because there well, were. If you're well, we in, now with uh, Mandalorian, and name also yeah, I mean, we get a little bit in Mandalorian. Yeah. But that was after that was at that that was in that was in response because that that those movies came out first. Right, the, the Mandalorian was set at a time before, yeah. and they're trying to, they were trying to fix a lot of that. They were trying to fix it, which they should totally because they completely ruined Star Wars with those three movies. Anyway, okay, back Name, to Superman. Back, back to Superman. To, Name had a, a fan cast question for us. He pit, he had a fan cast question for GI Joe. He said, "Alan Rittman as Sergeant Slaughter. Our thoughts." Well, let's Alan go back. Rittman, that was passed away. 
Alan Rickman is dead. Yeah. Okay. You mean, you mean it, Alan? It. You mean Alan Richman? I think he meant Richman. I think he meant Richman. He said it's oh, a guy. Who Reacher, played, Reacher uh, Slaughter. Yeah, that's that Reacher. Works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would yeah. work. Yeah. He put Rickman instead of Richman, is who he put. All right, okay. let's go back to Superman then. Let's just... Superman. All right. Superman. All right, you want to hear my point All about right. Superman? Yes. All right, so everybody has a big problem with that part at the end where Superman kills uh, Zod, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here, here's what here, you have to look at the dilemma that Superman's facing here is because Zod is one of the last few Kryptonians that he uh, knows exists, right? And so he's, he's deciding between the connection that he's made with uh, the people of Earth and his his upbringing versus making a connection with where he was originally from, right? Yeah. But further than that, throughout the entire movie, Superman has been portrayed as uh, a pacifist, right? He'll break stuff, but he won't like really hurt people, right? Your your power, if you refuse to use it, is meaningless. But in a situation where it comes down to the the ultimate expression of your power versus the protection of uh, someone who is powerless, their life, um, and and you have to make that choice, then if you refuse to make it and remain a pacifist and allow them to then pass away as a result, then you're then responsible for that act right you're you're yep. you are partly responsible for it because you had the ability to do something about it and you chose not to so superman is has to he has to grow past where he's been never before has he been in a situation where he could have ever been bested by anybody right where he ever was put to a a you know a moral dilemma or question that was so difficult as the choice that he had to make between Zod's life and the life of that family. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, the, the whole story and, is and so that oh, at at that point, like before that, lying around doing stuff. But at that point where he makes that decision, right? He now has now has become Superman at that point because yep. only at that point has he said. All of the rest of this time, I have been capable of expressing this power, and I have chosen not to. But when the need arises for me to stand up and, you know, do what is necessary, I will express that power in the most, you know, extreme way that is necessary. Right. Oh, yeah. That's if you if you have power but you never use it because you you choose not to, then your power isn't meaningful. It's it's yeah. meaningless, right? It's only once that you recognize that you are powerful and then you do you know, you choose not to use it when you shouldn't and you choose to use it when you should, only then is your power meaningful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And that that whole movie for me is it is it is Clark becoming Superman, realizing who he is, and understanding the 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 nature the the un- understanding the d- the difference between nature versus nurture. Well, on, and, on top and, of that, he also has to overcome the okay. So parents, right? Parents who have kids, they understand this. They're they're worried about their kids a lot. Right. So your your kids are going to go out into the world and you grew up through it. So, you know, that the world is not a nice place all the time. Right. And and you, you went through that and you have to take your little, innocent, wonderful child and you have to make the decision not to coddle them. You have to make the decision to put them out in the world as prepared as you can make them. Jonathan Kent was still operating under that fear of putting Clark out there into the world and exposing him when he made the decision to tell Clark to stay and let the tornado take him. Yeah. So as, as Superman's story progresses, you can see his growth where slowly 
his acceptance of that kind of fear and giving in to that kind of fear wears off as the movie goes on and he does you know he sees where his help is needed and he goes and you know rescues the people on the on the uh the platform the will platform right and and you know every little increments he starts to see okay i have this power and i need to use it responsibly right and and i think that that whole decision making process like builds until at the end of the movie you see when he finally becomes superman when he has to make that ultimate choice uh, you know am i going to express the ultimate expression of my power by taking this this person's life who uh you know arguably is closer to who i am than who these other innocent people are but the person who is closer to who i am is you know pretty terrible yeah you know well you you could literally call that that movie becoming superman yeah Mm -hmm. which which i love because we had never really gotten that story certainly not in movie or tv form and i mean although i guess you can make the argument smallville did that but just i, yeah, I was gonna say i think smallville the, the, yeah but like the entire premise that, of the show yeah, was the only you know and but like not in in a condensed story like that that it became so no, but, evident like that the point of that movie is not for him to fight zod the point of that movie is not to be like here's superman people the entire point of that movie is clark growing as a person to become the hero that his dad and his mom always knew he could be, but like you were saying, I mean, but we're afraid to let him be. They were afraid to let him, and at the same, so they, 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 they you know, his dad. For me, his dad not only was afraid to let him go into the world, but he was afraid to let him go into the world, knowing how powerful he was and how he could respond, yeah, to the That's, world if if he yeah. grew up. To be just a rig, like you can imagine, just a regular. Not only afraid teenager. for him, but afraid of him. Exactly, and there, so there, there's he, a lack of trust. Yeah, and so he kept he kept a tight leash on him for as long as possible to the point that Clark felt smothered. But Jonathan knew, like this is this is what I have to do because this is what's best for him and this is what's best for the world. And what that movie is Clark realizing all of that and realizing why his dad did everything he did. To, to then come out the other side of everything that happened to actually be Superman. Yeah. But I love that movie. That's one of my favorite comic book movies ever. Like, I watched that movie. Wrong, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I really liked that movie, you know, but I also really liked the original, you know, uh, I, I like the original more as a more, kid but... because I was a I was a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. And for me it, it was it's just... more innocent, it's more it's, yeah. it's more graspable as a as a kid because of its innocence. It doesn't I was... delve into deeper like you know ethical questions or like inner turmoil or anything like that. It's very innocent. And and you know, to some extent, Superman has always been kind of that, you know, that innocent, kind of naive or, or he comes off that way as innocent and naive. But when, when you, when you, you know, see, you know, it, you know, when he's well written, right? When you see that, you know, that more inner turmoil that he has to go through, you know, I, I think there's, what is it, uh, Justice League Unlimited, where he fights Shazam, or where he fights not, not Shazam, he fights um, Darkseid. It was just yeah, it was Justice League Limited. He fought in the last two episodes. He fought against Darkseid. That yeah, that and he where, says that that episode where he said he feels like he's living in a world made of cardboard. Yeah, he said I, I, I every day I I you know I hold back. Oh, that's oh, one I, of the best you know, lines no, ever. Nobody can, nobody you know I feel like I live in a world made out of made out of paper always taking or constant care not to break something to break someone. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually in a world be, of tissue paper. And, yeah, but you can yeah. take it, can't you? And then he like just dishes it out. Yeah, like, well, rare occasion. Let me l- cut loose. Yeah, and show you just how powerful I really am. I'm actually getting to meet George uh, Newborn uh, in uh, June at Nashville Comic Con. So he's the, gonna be there. the storyline with the the, the animated movie with Supergirl. 
uh, that storyline. They were retelling like the comic uh, comic stories. When he fights Dark Side there, that was another good good fight with yeah. Superman and, Dark Side. And the one uh, versus him and Shazam, where Luther sets him up to to destroy that. Uh, that was that was it. Yeah, because the um, it's supposed to be a reactor, but oh. Superman thinks it's a bomb, but it's made out of lead. The movie. Yeah. Uh, you're uh, talking the, about like, the uh, Captain Marvel. Man, the Batman. movie with Superman that was fantastic. Yeah. I that love fight. it when he finds out. Um, that he was set up. No, this is a, the different one. The, the, uh, which, no. You're, you're talking about just the. I'm talking about the animated movie. The animated movie where uh, Superman fights Black Adam and uh, Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. Black oh, Marvel and Captain Marvel. The and how mad Superman gets at the Wizard when he finds out what he did to Billy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is just. I I think my mash, mashfully understanding the character of Superman. What was the other the other animated one where it was him versus the elites or something like that? Yep. Yes, I actually that, that's actually that one, one was Superman a great film Superman there. fight also, and really, really, you know, kind of demonstrates, you know, he he has well, he has moved. come to in that situation he's come to fully embrace his role as Superman, who who he is. Mm -hmm. He recognizes that yes, he has all this power, but. If he doesn't want to become a tyrant, he needs to balance that power with some kind of ethical code. And yep. even though the the populace is crying, you know, we want justice and we want, you know, we want people to, you know, who are bad to be killed and all that stuff. You know, he in that moment he becomes the the teacher, right? He teaches those people. He says, you know. I, I scared you well I scared myself you know at the end of that or whatever he was saying but essentially he's like you know this is what you told me that you wanted this is how he, it would he look was if I about, did he was, how how terrifying ending, is that his ending speech to Manchester Black was Manchester was telling him after it was done that you're living a dream world Superman saying that's good dreams save us they keep us who we are in a short yeah. sense I'll tell you the weakest Superman animated films I have that I've seen is Superman Doomsday and Superman Unbound. Those are the two weakest ones in my. When opinion. they don't Superman. follow the comic book stories, they're, they're uh, to the to the T, like they, like a lot of the really good ones do. They're weak. Mm -hmm. The original Superman Doomsday one that was it was done in the Bruce Tim style, but it and, wasn't tied in the universe. It was not well done because he didn't do the Reign of the Superman stuff and all that. And well, Reign of the Superman, like the death, the funeral, the Reign of the Superman, that needs to be told as a whole story. It's like the the newer well, ones where they kind of try to do that in a, like a new Fifty Two setting was pretty good. Not not perfect, but they were pretty good. I liked so that that DC yeah, so that animated universe that we got there for the better part of about what was it eight nine years. Mm -hmm. that started with yeah. flashpoint i think that was for the most part awesome there was a few bad movies in there that i didn't like um and there was a lot of it that was based on new 52 stuff which i wasn't the biggest fan of but overall i think they handled that whole animated universe over the course of those eight or nine years really really well um and i think it's it's like some of it, I mean, it's certainly the best. I mean, so there's some of those movies that are better than you know, any like I, I love uh Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, the last one. Mm -hmm. Love that movie, you know, that's a good, yeah, it, it's they, a really went all out, movie. they really went all out with the violence, especially. I don't think a lot of people thought it'd be that gruesome and violent. Yeah, it was. I thought they did a really, really fantastic job with that. Not all of them were winners, there were some duds in there that came out during that time. That I, I didn't I didn't care for, but overall I thought they like that. To me, I was watching as those animated movies were coming out. I'm thinking, this is what the the DC you should be. This is what the live action movies should be. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like th these movies are way DC better. animated got more well, right than the, than the DC you. It, it, oh, because we all remember when Marvel tried their hand at DC animated films, how well that went. Like yeah, I have Marvel a few of animated stuff. Mm. 
Not, I mean, there's it a couple of decent ones in there here and there, but overall, no. There's that. It wasn't quote. bad, but DC rules in the animated movie property. We all know that. Yeah. While Marvel had it in live action. So. Well, they did for a while. Well, anyway. <laughs> I will say to the Superman Doomsday, the first animated movie, the problem was they were living on time and on budget. They couldn't tell a full story, and you cannot cram a boot. You cannot cram a full story like that into an eighty-nine-minute film. That's just my two cents. I have that one, but I get why they changed it with Superman clone. But no, that full quote. No, that full quote no, is, for a little, oh, go ahead, dreams Kevin. save us, dreams lift us up, and transform us, and on my soul. I swear, until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice become the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting. Never. You Googled that, didn't you? I sure did. <laughs> I kind of figured. I couldn't remember the entire it, line. I, so. I think it's important. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think it's a... I, I like that. It's statement. a really good message. It is. The name of hell, uh, that's from the Marvel stuff, is good for Disney to cover. That's one of the best Marvel animated though was Earth Mightiest Heroes. That show was fantastic. You had a Bruce Tim style feel to the animation. The stories were right out of the comics. It was very well done. Then Disney bought Marvel, rushed its conclusion so they can put up the stupid cartoon. Avengers Avengers Assemble. Yeah. I'll tell you, I did like Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2. I liked those animated films of Marvel. Those two I thought were pretty good. Back on the toy scene, did anybody get anything from the Holothon today from NECA? No. They're no. doing every Friday from the 12th to May 10th. Unless they're doing TMNT number one film figures, I'm good. I'm still wanting my Michael Edge. You don't want the, the hip hop cartoon turtles? No. no. My wife my my mom. will, but I know I don't need hip hop on my shelf. <laughs> I'm good with my sense they, of they got groceries, they got jackets, so nobody recognizes them. Yeah, they're all decked out. Wait, does one of them have hair back there in the list? Well, they got alternate heads with mohawks and hair. I wonder, is that real though? Is that like real fuzz? That looks mm-hmm. real on their heads, the mohawks. I would be surprised if it was real. Uh, they don't really <laughs> normally do the the flocked hair or the doll hair on NECA figures. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to agree with Matt. I do like Man of Steel a lot better than Christopher Reeve films. I mean, yeah, they're really good. Like, they're really good at heart films, but they don't really like right. to take rip. I'll solve it. I'll solve this whole thing. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. <laughs> what? I got kicked. I got booted all because I said I agreed with Matt. How about that? Mm. <laughs> I, th- I thought this was like an open forum, not like the uh, Gestapo. I know. Tell me about it. It's a rebellion. I, I'm, I'm not doing anything. It's just it, it, when, when, you, when you say a certain word, it just kicks you out on my clicking on the keyboard. What are you talking about over there? It's I'm a chair. Sure it's on the it. keyboard. It's a Jared Tater ship. Oh, okay. We'll put it that way. <laughs> Jared Tater. <laughs> uh, we're getting a 16th scale Daryl Dixon. From uh, <laughs> Toys. So yeah, good. I saw that. I, I, I mean, that's cool. It feels too little too late at this point, to be yeah. honest. Like... Um, Man, I just now look at the pictures. The soft goods look too big for him. They look like he's wearing his dad's clothes. Who's yeah. I mean, I look. I I, I told Walking you. Dead. No, it does look good. Oh. It looks like Nixon's a, his it last like name. A... <laughs> I just knew his first name was Daryl. Daryl Nixon. Then, and then it comes into my head. This is Daryl, my brother Daryl, and my other brother Daryl. <laughs> no, it's I'm hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. Yeah. My other brother Daryl. It just feels too little, too late for me. Aren't they coming out with the Dead Dead Reckoning Two, Dead Stranding Two, Dead Stranding? Yeah, (laughs) it's like a Death Stranding One with him in it. 
Maybe the, this kind of... I think there was an announcement about a Death Stranding 2. Did anybody order the giant, uh, man wasp two-pack? Nope. Uh, no. I did. I thought about it, and then I was like, that costs money. Well, I wanted it because this is a pinless version. I, I didn't buy the HasLab because for a giant man because I got the toy biz. But I mainly got this so I can display this in front of my toy biz one because it's a pinless version of that. I got this two pack. That matches the toy biz costume. You can uh, put that lab You can put him with Reed Richards now. Make them buddy buddies. The lab The wasp I had no desire for. You don't like that retro head? head? That's Amber Turd's face. I don't like the retro head. Who? That's Amber Turd's face. Oh. Yeah, but look at what? that. That like, retro like, pointy yeah, head right there with the do the antennas go up and down? They look like they might. They do. But she probably poops in Hank's bed. Why? Why are you mentioning he is she who shall not be named in this? Because it's her face. That's it's not her face. face. I, That's yeah, her. That, that totally looks like Amber Turd. Here's here's where I'm at sure? on that. Oh wait, yeah. it, is that it that does. totally looks like Amber Turd? It I, don't, does. I don't trust any of those people. <laughs> They're all corrupt. Well, suspicious. at least now we know. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely her. At least now we know who Hasbro likes. <laughs> well, it made Storm look like Jada Pinkett Smith from the uh, 97 figures. Oh, okay. That's true. My wife has that figure. I like that look for Wasp, though. It's very he's like. The, he's showing off his scarlet right Like there. the old, like the old. That's the first appearance look, yeah. Yeah, the yep. old sci-fi pulp magazines. <laughs> mm-hmm. The only thing that's more pulpy is if you like, give her a little ray gun and like a you know a rocketeer jetpack. Yep. The that's her first appearance look, so it works. And like I said, I'm mainly getting it for the Hank because so I can display with my giant man. Well, you can also make him Hank and uh, Reed lab coat bros. And if anybody, what, if anybody needs to figure out a use for this. Hank head, it's a lot better head to use on Chuckles than Chuckles head on G.I. Joe classified. So I don't like the Chuckles head. And this head pops right on there. It's funny, this came out for pre-order a few days ago, only for a little while later to become available to ship. So they got this out quick. The Dragon Ball Super... Super Saiyan God, say, uh, Vegeta. Saiyan, Saiyan. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it, Saiyan. That's what I just said. I'm making sure. That was what he was saying. Dragon. Saiyan, okay. Some people always pronounce it like Saiyan or Saiyan. I got this pre-ordered, so. But uh, Those people also say aluminium. They you do. Don't listen to that kind of negativity. They do. This actually looks pretty cool for if you're into the Sentinel armors. This is on Matt's bucket list. I look. I could give a rat's ass about Falcon in that costume. However, I do like those Sentinel figures. They are cool. I don't. That, that's you know, it. I like the. I like the Sentinel figures. I got one. Yeah. But I I don't have any connection to Falcon as a character. Like. Yeah, the, same. The, the the comic books that I read with Captain America, it was just Captain America like punching Red Skull's face in a lot. That's what about Captain America punching Hitler? They never really start pushing Falcon. No, uh, it was mostly just until Red. like the MCU oh. stuff. I mean, images came out of the new uh, Captain America movie. Air support is Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, I heard that. So here, uh, here uh, we're also gonna say it. Cyan, uh, Cyan, Cyan, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good. Cyan. Yeah, Cyan is what he's trying to say. But no, everybody, all the complaints. No, it's that, not. Not a shade of blue. It is. Cyan is a different color. Yeah. Oh, no, it's different. But what I was saying about the movie is that still shot when it came out, people were going crazy about hair support not having the mustache. These look cool, but they're disappointing. They don't have. I was like, "Oh, cool! They're going doing like copies of the Origins figures, but they don't have the articulation. They articulate just like the vintage He-Man figures." 
and they're kind of pricey. They're like thirty-five dollars a piece with no articulation. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay for that much for figures that barely have any articulation. How much are those? Not they that they, thirty-five. They don't even have thirty-five knee, dollars. They don't have knee or elbow joints. Those are like the original He-Man articulation. Yeah. I would not pay that much for No way. No. That's insanely expensive. It should be like, what that is. That should be I don't like, know, like 15 bucks. Yeah, I was going to say $10. I could see, though, I could see somebody who likes the vintage line and wants to try to get different characters that are sort of copies of that toy line like this. I could see some people who are into vintage buy these, though. But I don't think they're going to spend $35 a piece for the entire yeah, line. Well. Some people also buy Priuses, and you won't catch me doing that. No, that's true. That's very true. Although did anybody uh, for everybody out there, like they did put Kingpin back up for pre-order. You might miss the retro card at one. Has any forty bucks though? I, I still have. I have the original build a figure, oh, so yeah. 40, uh, I just feel I, like that's overpriced for that figure. Yeah. I ordered Blob and Colossus and he's, Juggernaut. He's a okay. giant figure. He's, oh, he's okay. Don't, okay. don't get me started on giant figures because uh, Diamond Select Toys puts out their big well, figures for what twenty nine ninety nine. Well, if, if Diamond Select would ever drop ten, a Kingpin figure, ten holy less. Ten less. They would put and arguably thirty five dollars plastic. Same Plus it was, same articulation right? Plus, that figure was cheaper the first time it came out. They've just increased the price of Big Bad, especially because, oh, it's a reissue. Because it was like $37 when it first came out. It, it was, was thirty-four like, ninety-nine when it first came out. Yeah, so it wasn't and, uh, more they, Yeah. I mean, it's cool. It's a good figure. If you don't have a Kingpin, that's a great Kingpin figure in like his oh, yeah. classic, in his oh, classic it look. It's a great Kingpin figure. I just, I already have the Build-A-Figure. Which is him in a little bit more of a modern look, which I like better. Which I, I use my uh, modern one as the Shadow King, and this one as the main dis display one. The only thing that I have is the live action version. But I agree, though. Uh, you got uh, Marvel Select kicking the same size figures or bigger figures out for for thirty bucks. Oh, they were twenty dollars. I think they moved their big figures up to thirty bucks now. Marvel Select. Yeah, I just bought the, the. I just bought three. I bought Red Hulk, uh, Captain America, and um, uh, 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 Crimson Dynamo, and all of those were like twenty nine. I think twenty nine ninety nine mm -hmm. or whatever. They were all yeah. thirty bucks. For this to be forty is. Kind By of the way, that Captain America figure is awesome. <coughs> that Captain is America. that. If it wasn't for the scale. That would easily be the best Captain America figure that has ever come out. Select one. That is the yeah, only thing. That is what he's talking about, yeah. I've seen that two-pack of the Wolverine at GameStop. GameStop. Dude, if this was six-inch scale, like, I don't care, but I know a lot of people do. Like, this is the best Captain America figure I have ever seen. But you gotta agree, the 20th anniversary is still a good Captain America. Oh, it's a great Captain America figure. Oh, I um, mean, I figure. Let's take a look at the I Diamond Select Captain America, because I, I didn't buy him, and it was a conscious choice, and I think it had something to do with the proportions. Oh. Yeah, no, I already, I posted my video of him last week. When did I post yeah. that video? I, you I posted it. it last week. The last week? Okay. I want to yeah, see I pictures. You posted it last week. I actually watched it. You want to see the pictures of the Marvel Select Cap? Well, I'm trying to find it. Type faster. You're on Mayfax, are you? Yeah, you're on the Mayfax page. That's mainly Mayfaxes. It says Captain America. Don't tell me how to do my job. You oh, show I'm more. sorry. You got to show more under brands. Here, zoom in on Matt. Make Matt I'm trying to big. quit yelling at me. Yell at him <laughs> some more. Now move as it. I'm sorry, Jared. I don't mean to yell at you, buddy. Here, help. Mute you, right? <laughs> Fantastic figure. Love it. I love it, man. I wish Marvel would do this. Or, or Hasbro would do this. If Hasbro would just do this. If it's sold out, you'll have to... I think it's sold out. You might have to change the setting. Okay. Does he have sold it out? Comes, it comes with three different heads. 
It comes with a pull-down mask. It comes with two shields. He comes with the straps and the belt that you can take on and off, depending on what look you want for him. Like, it, he can be... You can deck this dude out. Yeah, basically be a Captain America from whatever, you know, era is your favorite Captain America. I mean, I took the straps off my Marvel Legends cap and I gave him the Series 1 Captain America Toy Biz shield is what I gave him. Because this comes with the straps anyway, so I'm like... Why do I are these need... old product images? Yeah, they're all product images. I said, aren't these old product yeah, images? Yeah, those are old. Yeah, they are old. They're old. The, the mold don't look like this. This is not what it looks like that I have up on my screen right now. Yeah. Matt, if you want to show yours again. This yeah, thing I got. So... I had too many windows open. Okay, yeah, so but, on this product, on this one right here, and I can't tell because you got your, your shoulder straps on. I think his shoulders go out a little bit too far. I think this part of his torso is too long, and I think his legs are too long. But you're wanting to know what about the shoulders? And then, if you open his hands, his hands would like go practically, like the tips of his fingers would go practically down to like, I don't know, below mid-thigh. So the knuckles should be right about in line with the bottom of the crotch here. So that's yours looks much better proportioned than the product images that they got. Yeah the, the hip the thighs look better on yours too than the product images. Yeah. They don't look as long. It, and for, the arms don't look for quite perspective, as long. his his arms are shorter than mine. But kind of I have long arms, ass monkey got... arms. I don't know if that matters, but my, my arms, if I put my fingers out, touch my knees. Jeez. So <laughs> I have long arms, but I have a long, I have a long torso. And yeah. so when I put my hands down, my knuckles don't quite go all the way. Left. I am so looking forward to getting these, the missing links. Those are, I've got these from big bag toy stores. Hopefully if y'all like G1 transformers, you, somebody got these cause they're just, what a lot of G1 fans want it forever before Masterpiece or Hyper Articulate, Hyper Articulate figures ever existed. We want to articulate G1 figures and they're doing it for Optimus Prime for the 40th anniversary. But uh, I dig it. Real quick. Was, so I just want to say because Darth is saying that Diamond Select barely has any articulation, not anymore, dude. Like this is this has all the articulation of a McFarland figure. Double jointed knees, double jointed elbows, ankles, wrists. It's got uh, waist swivel. It's got that upper torso joint. Um, it's got bicep uh, swivels. It's got that uh, upper uh, thigh joint that turns like a McFarland does. So no no thigh cut, but you've got that. This has this has all the articulation of a of a. Uh, it, it, uh, of, of, like I said, of a, of a McFarlane, it's just lacking that that thigh cut that a, that a Marvel Legend has. So they they've stopped, finally started adding double jointed knees and elbows to their stuff. The um, AK is like it is expensive, but it's about the same price as what they were doing. Not much difference between the standard reissues they were doing just long, not too long ago. Yeah, they were doing like the cab by itself for fifty bucks. Of G1 Optimus Prime and the uh, Japanese reissues of Optimus, the G1 Optimus Prime with the trailer were $100. This is $120 for an articulated version, uh, $70 for just a cab. But they are expensive, but How what is it? Is that figure? It's, uh, but, but it's about six inches tall. That's like, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> It, it's like I said. That's a lot per inch it, there. It's Transformers. It's They've always been expensive. It's nuts. Because, I mean, it, arguably, there's more engineering that goes into a Transformer. Oh, oh but there's not sorry. He was just being sarcastic. <laughs> they're not like a whole lot more articulation. That goes yeah, into it. This is, I mean, uh, yeah, this is an all new tooling, new mold. It's got. It's want to have die cast yeah. parts. So there's there's more engineering that has to go into it with regard to the design stuff. But yeah, 
it's I don't think that it should be that seems like there there's a little bit of price gouging there due to well, popularity. It's, part of it too is import. And yeah. overseas it's not that expensive and not not this price. But you they're getting them shipped over in a container and that's part of the jack of the price. But definitely looking forward to getting them all. This is ridiculously overpriced for what it is. It's a, just a it's, Red Oak cast. Just, it's a freaking pop figure is what it is. Yes. And they're wanting two fifty for it. I'm not buying it. It no. looks great. If that was like, you know, I, and we talked about this before. If that was like 50 bucks, I'd be like, you think it's right, nine I, over here? I, I would I would say, ah, right, it's overpriced, but you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pay it well, just because it looks it's cool. It's just a solid statue, well, though. I don't think. Well, you think. I, I don't think that's worth well, you bugs. think big bad? Well, I think it does have like arm rotation, like just straight, you know. And I think the oh, legs yeah. do turn a little bit at the, does, at the hip. There's no, if, even if they did, you can't. But have them in one position, or he's falling. Yeah, no, over. I know it's 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 shit. But what I'm saying is like, like at fifty dollars, this thing is overpriced. But I'd probably at fifty bucks, I'd be like, nah, you know what? Screw it. It kind of looks cool. I'd probably spend it. But at two fifty, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like it would be overpriced at fifty bucks. <laughs> like, no. well, we know insane. when it comes to when we know when it comes to Big Bad, they like to overprice some stuff on their website. Like, look at their Dragon Ball figure. Yeah, well, this, this, this is from this company. This is from this company. It's not. Yeah. Their, their price. Their prices. They're not overpricing over anybody any other U.S. vendor. That, that's what I was talking about before. They have import pricing because they're not setting that price. It's every vendor in the country is setting that same price you you go to big bad toy store you go to uh tf stores you go to chosen prime they're all running the same price well wow. it's oh, I'm saying like, pricey I was, for what it is I, I was talking about like dragon ball figure arts how i can go on literally any other website and find them for like 30 to 60 bucks but then i go on big bad and they're like over a hundred dollars well it, it depends on the, a, on the figure too you had to be a huge juggernaut fan to pay two hundred and fifty dollars for this. Oh yeah, yeah, it's I, ridiculous. I'm just don't, with the, well, especially don't because the at that price, there are like nice statues and things you can pick up. Yeah, you know, and, and you, you can buy, you buy like that? you can buy the original uh, Diamond Select Juggernaut for way less yeah. than that. And that looks almost exactly the same. It has about has more articulation. Actually, has articulation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still Goku just, just got the best. This is no Walmart Goku exclusive the- that nobody's ever going to get. Uh, when does that thing release? Have they dropped the release date yet? They have not said. And Walmart's in charge of the release date. So, who knows? What's going to happen is the, the bots are going to buy it all in 30 seconds. They'll go up for pre order, and 30 seconds later, it'll be sold out. Didn't that just happen somewhere else? And the, the company put out a release, a statement saying we apologize. What was it? What was it? It was Hasbro. It was those ATVs on Hasbro, wasn't it? And Hasbro put out that statement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, no, I got it pulled up. That's the next thing. I was yeah, they sold about. out like literally in three or four minutes. Yeah, and people were pissed. I never even saw it. Up and Hasbro sale. put out a put out a press release saying we're very sorry this happened. Uh, I mean, I don't think I don't know. I don't think they're going to do anything about it, but. Well, here's what yep. they should do. Are you ready? They should wait until the orders go through, and then they should release it again. Yeah. For everybody else to buy at a, at a lower price, and then let all the people who are doing the scalping bull crab eat it. Yeah. Yep. Which I'm actually digging the Tiger Force colors on the on it. Yeah, I like it. I think I tried nice. to pre-order it. I tried to pre-order this, but it was sold out. So. Yeah, it was. It was. It was fast. It went. Yeah, I think it was like, what, two minutes? Five, maybe five minutes? <laughs> Here's the funny thing. If this had if this had just been put to retail, like at Target or something... Oh, it is going to Target. It Well, it's going to end up on clearance because I'm sorry, like, a lot of people don't like the Tiger Force shit. This is the... This is a Target Tiger exclusive. Force goes, ends up going on clearance. This is actually a Target exclusive. And big... Um, well, all the exclusives, Hasbro Poise, uh, Pulse, Poise, Poise, we we'll start calling them Hasbro Poise. <laughs> they they get a limited amount they put up for pre-order uh, of the store exclusives. I mean, and that's what it was. 
you can't say that people don't like Tiger Force. I mean, remember when Outback came out, he sold out quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When they when they dropped him down to nine ninety nine, which is when I bought three of them. <laughs> I'm talking about the first time when they brought him out. He sold out quick. I couldn't even get. Dude, them. he was he was yeah. such a peg warmer at my targets. Like the one with the survivor was, shirt, the white one, the tiger one. Yeah, the orange version. one. I think you can buy real cheap now. Oh, you can. I got. So I this got one right here for ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that one for nine ninety six or whatever nine ninety nine. Yeah. Are those the crimson uh, bats? Are, right here? Yes, they are. But you I can get remember when, bats for thirteen dollars off Kids Warehouse. Oh, and by the way, uh, Stalker is on Amazon right now uh, for like thirteen bucks. Yeah, I picked up a couple more of him because I'm gonna about him the other day. hit bash him. But it, the Stalker is a great. I, I I would say in general, Stalker's like the best kit bash body. I see that crimson. Yep, I, I bought a bunch of them for that upgrading. Yeah, uh, Grunt was up for like when I found him the other day, he was up for like thirteen dollars. But then the next time I looked, because I was thinking about getting the second one, he was back up to like twenty six or something. And if you need the twin, the twins, seven dollars piece. Yeah, I regret. I, I got them when they went on sale at Amazon. They went on sale for like eleven bucks a piece. I think I picked both of them up. That their their up. online store, uh, Darth. Uh, I've ordered for them a couple times, and I have to. No problem. Oh, and yeah, uh, just for just for eBay ordering, there's discount codes right here for shipping. <laughs> yeah, don't say, don't make that mistake. I did. I did, didn't even see that discount code. I had already ordered by the time Jared was like, "Oh, did you use the discount code?" I'm like, "What is over a hundred dollars though?" Oh, but you, fifty bucks, you get five dollars off. Okay, well, I mean. The bat well, they actually. Got, they got Marvel at, Legends too. They sell the bat over at a Books a Million. That bat right there. They've got at least, I think, ten of them in stock. They got Marvel Legends real cheap. Yeah. It's like buying from Ollie's and Ross online. Yeah, it's it's basically what it is. They're online. This, this is a fun troop builder. builder. There, the uh, super villain aim one. That's a fun troop builder. Yeah. Sure what's this? What's it called? Kids Warehouse is the website. Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. No. I'll have to check that out later. There's that maggot. Yep. Mm. Nine bucks. Yeah. That's what Ten I Ten bucks for this uh, it's, uh, Outback Rogue that people were going crazy for for a while. That's that was a Dane body. These were Amazon exclusives. Which, by the way, Amazon, you, you go on Amazon, that thing is 35 bucks. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is Amazon exclusive. Different sellers selling the 55 bucks. Well. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's where I got that, and that was originally I, what one twenty. I'll, I'll uh, tell you all. I've got a funny Amazon story for y'all. There we go. I bought, thank you. I tried thank you, AK. This, on Amazon, I tried to buy this guy on Amazon, and what happened was when he came in after a week of waiting, it wasn't this figure. It was a di completely different one. Who is the that funny? Story, I can't tell. Uh, broken Matt Hardy from AEW. Oh. But the funny thing was, when I opened the packaging, it was not Matt Hardy. It was Scorpio Sky. So literally, I paid I paid for a white man and got a black man instead. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. I literally did. I'm like, this. What did you say you did? Wait a minute. What did you say you did? Saying he bought a black hey, man. You need to kick him off the channel. I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, he said it. I mean, he, he said it. Not we didn't. I mean, yeah, he's gone. We here at Collector there. Fusion do not endorse slavery. He's now been outmanned. No. no, I'm saying this was the figure I ordered. I didn't get this one. Amazon so, said it wrong. But, but basically, he he bought he bought a black man. Uh, I heard. Black man. It, you know, at, it, I mean, really, is it? Does that make it not wrong if it was by accident? You know what I mean? That's terrible, man. It's I can't believe you did a thing like that. It's just, just awful. Okay, I'm sorry. Forgive my mouth. I'm sorry. Hey, is that a shark? That's why I was looking to see if they had any in stock. We need a we need a Fonzarella figure to jump the shark. Yeah, yeah. Deep eyes. I actually got that shark upstairs. I got it from uh, Ollie's. I thought about buying the shark a couple of times. I was tempted, and then I was tempted, and then I was like, "Man." I didn't watch it, but I did see some of the recap stuff. Like. I think I lack that fear of losing out that like a lot of people have. 
Name, mm-hmm. I did watch WrestleMania. Me and my wife, we watched it this past weekend. Yeah, got, Name asked it in it. Watch this night gets uh, just, Amazon exclusives a lot. So. But yes, Name, I did. What are, what are those wife, robot toys? These are Transformers. I've never heard of them before. Yeah, I think they're new. Yeah, they, they seem like they are. I mean, robots are new, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, here's I, the, I the popcorn right. bucket for Transformers One. <laughs> nice. I hear that Transformers are all the rage nowadays. I don't know. People seem to have Matt, a problem. Matt Vulcan's giving you a five minute warning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I got five minutes till my show. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got uh, you hand pictures of Magnavos, which looks fantastic. Um, I got this on pre order. He is big. Big meat. Big man. There is the Voyager class Optimus Prime. A dwarf. That that looks like somebody did a close up. You know that that famous picture on the internet of the girl on the the couch surrounded by a bunch of big dudes? I liked it. Uh, The Voyager is probably about the size of like a warpath. Somewhere somewhere around there. That picture looked like Optimus Prime was about to get. We need a, we need a, we need a big Optimus Prime. What was that one that you sent me that link of once? I should have ordered that. Uh, oh, the uh, Pengu and scale. the blue one. The the blue one and then uh, the Pengu. I don't remember. The big... One's like three feet tall. One uh, and one's like uh, or like I think close to three feet tall or something like that. Oh, two foot seven. Two foot seven. Yeah, and the other one inches or something. Yeah, and the other one is like a eighteen, almost eighteen inches. Yeah, I really, I really thought about ordering that, that two foot plus one. And we got the pre-orders up for the last masterpiece, Optimus, uh, masterpiece Transformer. They're they're MPG MPG nine is it for this the cab? No, that's for, for the whole thing. That's. MP9. Oh, it's MP. This is MP60. Just the base bot. I want to see scale. We're talking about MPG stuff's going to be smaller. That's why they did the Masterpiece trains small scale. That's MPG. The Raiden trains, they sucked. The third party version of the trains were so much better. So they're just going to be pushing people to third party. We've got previews for Transformers number eight. Uh, Liga One showing up. This this is like doing uh, gangbusters in sales and comics right now. It's probably like one of the popular Transformers comics in a long time. They're selling uh, thousands thousands of copies of this one. When you have uh, IDW they were selling at max, I think, like around about 3,000 issues to the stores. And these, this is selling like tens of thousands of copies per issue. Right now, it's like the hottest book at my friend's comic book shop. Like the last few issues, uh, when they when it really took off, when Optimus got Megatron's arm, he had reordered that book like four times. Uh, they're doing a special edition Optimus Prime as a, a Corvette race car. It's kind of weird. It's like Michael Bay, Michael Bay version it, of Optimus it's, Prime. It turns into it's, it's his look from a not Age of Extinction. Last from, night. Yeah, from last night. I tried to think of it. Yeah. This game. And then we get some get some pictures here. Oh, come on, we got a hand, we got a good looking guy right here. I guess <laughs> trying to get it to open up a new window. <laughs> there we go. I was trying to see what's in. Oh, we're getting a Studio Series Sharkticon. So we'll preview sneak peek there. And uh, some other Transformers on display. 
I really hate they canceled the premium finish studio series. Yeah. Like I like that was this, always this is, what I really ordered for Transformers was the premium finish. This is one of the things that's kinda of weird here. They're reissuing Earthrise Optimus Prime again. This is mm -hmm. the fourth? Third or the fourth, fourth time they've reissued. It's the fourth. It's the fourth. And they've reissued here. Which makes no sense because we're getting a new Studio Series Commander class, G1 Optimus Prime, and they're reissuing this one again. It's like, mm -hmm. make no sense. Gentlemen, and, I have to cut out. All right. I'm all getting right. yelled at on my other channel. All right. <laughs> already. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just now nine, and people are already yelling. We'll see uh, you tomorrow. Uh, actually, you will not. I am not doing a show tomorrow night. Me and my wife have a date tomorrow night. We're going to do something. Yeah. So uh, no geek no geek chat tomorrow night. All right. Okay. So All right. we we are doing a giveaway stream tomorrow on Electric Fusion tomorrow. So all right. So if you're looking for geek right. stuff, we got it there. I'm back. <laughs> all right. I will see y'all later. Cheers. Later. Jared, don't 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 end the chat and get me kicked off YouTube. All right. <laughs> what? Oh, link with Megatron. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. I'll see y'all later. later. See you. Cheers. But this one makes a little more sense getting a reissue because it's hard to get. Mm -hmm. What is that? That is War for Cybertron Optimus Prime that from one. a video game. What does he look like when he's transferred? I have. Right that, here. Mm, yeah. I have War Cybertron from the Net, I have War Cybertron from the Netflix uh, show Premium Finish is the one I've got. Yeah, this was right. actually my first Transformer I've gotten at all. This is the Earthrise uh, from the from the TV trilogy, the, the, the animated trilogy, which sucked. You know, I wonder why did they never make a version of Transformers from like Energon? So what's oh, well, that's funny. The render is actually showing uh, the Netflix version. It is yellow eyes. that is that is the Netflix version one I've got in my hand. Yeah, yellow eyes. Now this is. I that wish we, we got a premium finish like this on this figure. Mm -hmm. So I'll, those color schemes, but we never got it. We got these really flat colors. Premium finish, premium finish just makes Transformers look so much better. Oh, remember uh, the bubble? The uh, remember the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime when it came out? Oh, it, man, it, uh, it sucks. A friend of mine, he sits at the cons. He's a uh, he uh, uh, does cons all the time. He he. When he first ordered the Japanese Takara versions, uh, when they quit doing the Takara premium finishes, mm -hmm. it last time I had him, he's the last time I saw him at the last, uh, he's had those figures for years because they're exactly the same as American versions. They just put Japanese stickers on the boxes. They quit doing, mm -hmm. used to be if you ordered Takara, they're completely different paint jobs. Uh, they do a premium finish, the price is real different because they're doing more. To, in the factory, they were nicer. You paid a premium and got a better figure. Mm -hmm. They quit doing that, and they didn't tell the vendors. Mm -hmm. And he ordered those, and he got stuck with them. It's because mm -hmm. he, he paid up, paid a lot more than what he would have paid for the American versions, and they're exactly exactly like the American version. Yeah. Well, on Big Bad, they'd be like thirty some dollars. Then when you pay premium finish, it's an extra twenty. I mean, most of my transformers I got are premium finish, so which. I'm wanting to see scale on this thing, but after seeing the high, well, the little small blurry pictures, I was excited for this thing, the Power Master Prime. But actually seeing the high res pictures, it looks like crap. I don't think. I think scale wise, I don't think it's going to be like the four inch tall figures. It might be six. I know, I know it's not going to be four inch. It's 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 a no. uh, Hasbro. They don't do the little like a uh, new age legend scale. I'm wanting to see this next to MP10. Because okay. they're going to quit. Do, they're going to quit doing the old MP10 as the benchmark scale. Mm -hmm. They're going to start the third. The MP60 is the last masterpiece, and they're going to go to smaller figures. So it makes me wonder if this is the same size as MP10. If it's not, I wonder. What's I wonder the, they imagine they go six inches instead of seven. Six, I would seven. assume they're going to go somewhere close to probably what current uh, mainline figures are probably usually seven inches tall is the main line 
but it depends on the figure because some of them will go up to eight inches tall. Well, I've seen close-up pictures the uh, the super mode. It looks awful. It does. It looks terrible. It need, it's missing paint. It's missing deco on is what it's missing. It's missing well, that detail. Well, they're doing the anime style, which, which anime style, but with metallic colors, which don't make sense. The Optimus, it needs to be white and brighter blue is what it needs. We did get some that updates from Toys. Mom and Toys is going to do some He-Man heads. Replace the, this ugly mug here with this. Mm -hmm. Because Mattel cannot make a He-Man head to save their life. Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. I mean, so if you the, compare if the flagship thing, character, yet they seem to hate him. Yeah, his eyes are too far apart. I don't know. Well, I don't. I don't dig the open mouth expression one. But I like the one. yeah. I like the one where he's got his closed mouth. Yeah, that one's better. Yeah. I like I like verse two too. too. Uh, okay. Yeah, he looks like, uh, would, could I just eat too much Taco Bell? You could literally uh, put a cigarette in your mouth or something. They're showing, uh, the ramen, t uh, ramen racer is in the shipping container and being shipped out to vendors. Sweet. Good. So we should be getting an email soon about getting the pay for shipping. So, I'm looking forward to getting mine. I got one black one, one orange one. And they start showing these new tanks they're doing. They're doing different variants. Aku Which, just said, Masterverse is bad. I agree. Masterverse. I like well, they, Origins better. I don't, the only Masterverse stuff I really pick up are the stuff I've missed and I can fudge into a classic display. The only thing I like from Masterverse is their new Eternia line, which is supposed to be more classic, but with some modern aesthetic. They still got those weird biceps. Like, they're yeah. cut too far up to allow for more movement. Mm -hmm. You can do that without wrecking the articulation. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at wrecking the sculpt, I mean. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but really, Masterverse, the only good line about it is, of course, New Eternia, or like you said, Origins is my favorite he man line to collect. Origins is. Yeah, the Origins are like selling. Of course, they did screw up with the Evil Inn. The yes. film Evil Inn, they gave her yellow skin and no mm -hmm. cape. I actually canceled her. Because the Filmation one is not supposed to have yellow skin, and she's supposed they, to have a cape. They made her like the, or, like the original Origins figure was the problem. Right. And it's already made. It's in a shipping container being sent out. Oh, so it's already heading this way. So they're not going to fix it. I guarantee They're already that. produced, so I canceled it because more than likely they'll make a another version the right they'll, color. They'll reissue. I mean, Mattel, whenever they make mistakes, they try to reissue the figure again and correct those mistakes. It takes a while. Like but the, the knees yeah. on the earlier Origins females. Yeah. Like, I have... That's a good size tank. And they're doing, like, the bridge layer, a couple variants of it, and the turret, uh, turret style. Mm -hmm. Like, this equal end is the reissue with the better sculpted knees on the figure. Mm -hmm. This is the reissue. But, yeah, they'll, they'll reissue the cartoon equal end and make them more accurate. They shouldn't, but they will. Trying to find... They did a color picture and pricing on the 18 van... I bet it's on their Instagram. Aku said, at least she won't have bad knees. That's true. She won't have the bad sculpted knees. That's for sure. But yeah, I remember when War Here we go. first came out. Like, it, like uh, we got pricing say, on Orchard. the 18 van. The base model van is going to be a hundred dollars. That don't it doesn't look like the eighteen van. It's going to come black or white. Won't have the spoiler and the the sun visor and the lights and stuff. It's just going to be base vans. To get it to look like the eighteen van, it's one hundred fifty bucks. That's early bird pricing for both of those. And I That's think. Not bad. I 
I thought somewhere they're going to start putting the pri uh, shipping into the price. Uh, I think he said that on one of the live streams. Mm. Like, or one of the, uh, you know, update announcement things. Because he, he apologized about not having included it in the price the first time. Yeah. And, you know. Well, they're still a fr fairly new company, so they're trying to work everything out. Yeah. But definitely, I'm going to get an 18 band. So. <laughs> I get uh, it, but I don't sell the sell space for it. Well, you make space because it's eighteen band. You get the eighteen band when I'll, when I'll when make space. You're an eighteen band. You take the eighteen band. I'm gonna make space for it. Okay, I will get it. I'll get it because I know to make you happy. I'm trying to figure out what this is. It's a one twelve uh, scale vehicle automobile. Uh, that's not a DeLorean. That looks like a, not car. Like a car is what it looks like. At first, it's like, that's not an F. A lot of people, are, is it a Knight Rider? It's like, well, it's clearly not an F body because uh, the Trans Am well, there's a window right here. Look at the back, but, of the back of it right there. Yeah. There's the, he's got the back of the vehicle at his head. And that then there's looks like the a DeLorean. It is, wait. No, that is a DeLorean. No, DeLoreans don't have this window. Uh, they and the have, have, have gold wing doors. They do. They have what? have gold wing doors. This 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 does not have gold wing doors. This oh. is the the roof line, the A pillar, and the. Uh, uh, I don't know the back part. There looks like the hey, name. Name said it's a Ferrari. Is what he's saying it is. Name is. My get when I first looked at it, my guess is Lotus James Bond's Lotus. We'll pull it up might be for that. Let's see what that looks like. But there's also two. You see this little window that made me think it's not a Neff Body Trans Am? That is on the Super Super Pursuit mode Knight Rider. There's a little vent comes out right here. So it's possibly it could be an F body. But let's see. The Aku. Lotus that turned into a submarine. Aku made a suggestion saying, is it a turbo? Is what so you've, got that, you've got that little window there. The back's very much like a DeLorean. I'm thinking it's a Lotus. It might be. You don't have the gold wing doors. Like... Let's take a look at it again. There's the plastic ball. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I think you might be right there because the line. Because right. if you look at the line of the back of the um, where the the back lift would be, mm -hmm. uh, it's right in line with that window that comes down. And if you the look only here, thing right, that throws shape, it off, that is, triangle at the back looks a little bit wrong. Yeah, right there. The gas door here too. That's the location of an F body. Hmm. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. You can also see see the gas doors right here on that, one. and the wheel well is issue. But you got Knight Rider Super Pursuit mode. You got that vent that opens up on the side, which makes it, if they're doing that pop out, if they're going to do a Knight Rider and have it like do Super Pursuit mode, that could be a thing too. And the gas door would be where they show it, it's like right there. So it's it's hard to make out with where it's the underside of a plastic shell. We can't really see. So it's. I don't know. I mean, it'd be cool either way. <laughs> it's cool they're doing 112 skill like movie vehicle. My extra detail in the back was what was making me think it was a DeLorean. Like they were getting ready to do like a. Yeah. So the super, the super Pursuit mode has all that crazy detail stuff on the back too. And we got loose collectors. They did a like stand test of their, their Great Wolves. 
and that's the one I, I ordered the gray one. He's not floppy. That's the thing with those type of legs. You usually see like hard to get those kind of legs to stand. Uh -huh. Tight joints. And I like it. Great range of movement on the head. You know the pro. You know what I see right here. I see a company that actually cares about its product, unlike Hasbro Mattel, who makes so many pro who makes so many issues with their product. Well, they're they're doing one off molds too. Like they're they're getting four uses out of the wolf, but not much you can do after that. You you got the white well, the, and like the gray, you gotta... the gray, the brown, the white, and the black. I and they're I'm actually just... doing different head sculpts for each one of them. Well, I'm just saying, like, you got a small company like that who cares about its product that it's trying mm -hmm. to deliver, unlike a big company like Hasbro Mattel, who makes so many mistakes that they don't care about their product that much. Those are cool. Those are, they are cool. Maestro Union, Fury yeah. Planet, Tiger Blade, Master Wing, Wing. exclusive version. Yeah. They already released him in orange, and he was a really good figure. Yeah, I got the orange one. I like it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, um, I got me ordered some Abyss Force stuff, like, um, what is it, those humanoid shark creep figures from Loose Collector? No, it's not Loose Collector, it's Fury Toys, I think. I'm still waiting for my order to come in at that. So you got some third party uh, turtles coming in. Mm hmm. That'll be on uh, 5K Toys. Yep. Yep. It's 5K Toys uh, Instagram. And, and if this... you go to 5K Toys, it, and their website will have stuff that's third party redacted, the other faces and stuff. Just go to their Instagram. You can find good pictures of them. Mm hmm. Well, that's so cool. So that, uh, that yeah. body. I think that's a repaint. I think he's originally blue. I like the orange. No, that, yeah. I like yeah, the that orange. Yeah, that is a repaint. Oh, this is, uh, I think we uh, mentioned this last week. There's somebody's, oh, it's, it's supposed to be a different company making actual pit heads for this not pit body. You know, um, I actually found the, uh, the genuine pit figure last week. I found it at a toy store and the guy was charging $250 for it. 250 for the original bill of figure. If it's not a knockoff, yeah. that's a good yeah. price. Yeah, it was 250. I mean, these are cool, but oh, I'm I'm buying these. Yeah, I, I'm I, getting I, I'm getting this one, and I'm gonna mail it to Don. <laughs> and hey, are you remember, are you gonna remember that uh, Thor Buster I made? I want some soft goods are, for this. Yeah, are you going into an Incredible Hulk figure, like a Red Hulk or Gray Hulk? No, no, I'm. This is gonna be Pit. Okay, okay, just making I don't, sure. I don't need to make Hulk. I got. 1500 hulks i don't need to yeah, make another hole customizer jared sometimes you take your customizing to the extreme so i was just asking but the... oh and i don't know if anybody's seen this thing the Cthulhu. That's, that is cool isn't that like 250 bucks i have no idea and then like seven inches tall or six inches tall i don't know it wouldn't surprise me if it was two fifty to three hundred dollars for that thing. I mean, all the sculpting and paint and stuff you got there. I mean, whoo! Well, let's, let's Google search. It looks it looks good. It's too rich for my blood. It, if that's the one that does. I think it is. Shopping. Uh, one hundred eighty nine. Is that it? No. Uh, it's either two hundred bucks or one hundred eighty nine. That's uh, two hundred bucks. Yeah, that's too. Much. I don't think it was very tall. It's 112 scale. Aku said McFarland could do it for 50 bucks. Yeah, and it would look like they did it for 50 bucks. It would look cheap. Yeah. 11 it inches. Is 11 okay. inches tall. I thought it was. It's 11, 11 inches tall. tall. Yeah. That's still, still pricey for that, I think. That, that's I, I feel. 
I feel it's too expensive too. It's, it priced me it, out of it. That's really well, good. Spiro Toy Stories is doing if they can get it unlocked. Which oh, let's check on them. I mean, if they can get it unlocked, the Mamba is going to be ninety bucks. You and that Mamba. <laughs> Uh, everybody's wanting the Mamba. Yeah. Yeah, they got the prices here. Kickstarter price is $89, then get unlocked. Yeah, how how big is he? He is, I think they said 10 inches tall. You said 10. I said 10. Yeah, you said 10 inches tall. Oh, oh. That's what yeah, you said. Right now they're at two forty five. They're in. They got four days to go, but they get a usually get a big surge at the end. So have to wait and see how far it goes. Yep. I guarantee if it doesn't reach all the way to Mamba, they're going. We got to last time it got close to four hundred thousand on their first Kickstarter. It's three something. So hopefully they'll get a big surge and unlock some it more stuff because. I like to get this. I, I guarantee you, if it doesn't reach all the way to Mamba, they're going to it. Re, they're going to release it anyway, or yeah, they'll well, probably they, do they, another. Cooling is too, uh, very expensive. But you're looking at uh, oh, I know. Regular, regular figure. You're looking probably like thirty thousand or plus, plus for a regular fig, figure to, to for tooling. Oh, I and know. he's, a, he's a massive figure, so they got a lot of tooling that's going to be more expensive. Oh, I know. I'm saying they'll probably. They'll probably get done what figures it reaches, and then they'll do another tier thing again, or do another backer deal and put the figures and make them less, like charge them All these a little bit less. New female heads unlocked. They're getting like I could see them doing that. The like, cyborg heads look pretty cool. Those look cool, yeah. I could see them. And whatever. I like these heads. The bulldog smoking a cigar. I, I got the pre. I ordered the bulldog and. That'll be the head I'll have on mine. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I could see this reaching to a certain point where they make those figures like, okay, let's do another another uh, backer list and let's put the figures that did not get to the limit and let's see how far it goes. These are kind of cool. Do I'm something like that. Tempted to get these. They're little kits, like the like the. It's like a chibi. Yep, yeah, they're little chibi. They're. they're Basically the size of the original Action Master figures, but they have actually have articulation. They're minis. They're, they're mini little model kits too. They're they're minis. They're pre-painted model kits. I kind of dig them, just for nostalgia. Because I actually had most of the Action Masters at one time. This looks badass. Two hundred. I've been 200 to 180 to $200. Yep. There it is. Because when some, when a figure looks that good, you have to expect it to cost a lot of money. So. Well, Isn't that the one McFarland made a statue out of and everybody was like disappointed? Yeah. I mean, they already did make... Uh, someone actually said earlier today that the Neo statue looks like Don McFarlane himself with glasses. It doesn't look nothing like Keanu Reeves. So you can see Which I've never picked any of the statues up because they're not they are not worth anything. They're just statues. Well, it is expensive. It looks like it's around about uh, 150 or so. 150, okay. I said 180, 200. So. It is a good look. It is a beautiful looking figure, though. Yep. Don't have any connection to it, so for me. Yeah. That is pretty much all I got. The Roman Toys has got some uh, packaging uh, samples, like for their uh, Not Brave Star, the Marshal. Mm -hmm. Tish shot in it. And for their uh, aviator, a lot of different. That marsh. The marshal is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> it does look good. I think I made a few Warcraft figures a while ago. Yeah. 
And that is all I got for toys. And I think that's all for the night. And everybody in the chat, thank you for coming out and hanging out with us tonight. It's always fun getting to talk toys. Jace, Cannon, thank you. Uh, I know you yeah. had to. Cannon had to come in here and like settle the things right with Superman. I, I had to. I had to <laughs> Matt out. will come here. Go. This is why I like Superman so much. <laughs> I told my wife, she thought when I told her about Matt, how when he gets on a topic, he loves to go on about it. She's like, really? I'm like, yes, he does. And just remember. Hey everybody, uh, Todd Fodder here, uh, bringing you the latest in the Todd McFarlane. Uh, uh, this is the new Batman uh, Samurai. Batman Samurai, kind of kind of cool, kind of cool. Got, got some cool shit here and there and in a package. And uh, I make him a little... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tomorrow, everybody in the chat, tomorrow night, we doing a thank you, uh, subscriber appreciation, thank you on Collector Express, want to do a few giveaways, but uh, they're at seven, start at 7 o'clock Eastern, and we'll see you then. Later, y'all. Cheers. Later. Ninja, finish.